in his third year as head coach of the UH football team, the Nick Rolovich offense is a defensive coordinator's nightmare. Hawaii runs, they shoot, they ground and pound, and they put up numbers that make Hawaii fans stand and cheer. This week, Rainbow Warriors found their way to San Jose to meet the Spartans off a of bye week and for their homecoming. College football is coming up. Live from CEFCU Stadium here in San Jose, California, this is University of Hawaii football on Spectrum Sports. Today, Rainbow Warriors on the road facing the Spartans. For the Spartans, it is their homecoming and their Mountain West Conference opener. Hawaii, San Jose State. Over the years, it's been a great matchup. My broadcast partner, Rich Mia. Yeah, this yourself. is going to be exciting. It's really San Jose's official homecoming, but it seems like it's almost a road homecoming for the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors because there are a lot of fans going to be dressed in green, and I think they're excited to see Hawaii, this team, the most excited they've seen in years. This team is destined for some good things. And nobody wants to be the homecoming victim. Yeah, and that was well talked about. If you're somebody's homecoming scheduled opponent, that's almost insulting. And Hawaii is too good to be anybody's homecoming uh, opponent. But they, but they got to go prove that yes. today. They've got to execute. Rainbow Warriors, Spartans, keys to the game today are. Well, let's start with Hawaii. And I got 42, the number 42, because Hawaii is 4-0 and this season when scoring 42 points or more. Hawaii is 8-0 and under Nick Rolovich as head coach. 18-0, and including his tenure as the head coach. For San Jose, get offensive. If you want to beat Hawaii, you need to score points. Spartans' offense is struggling statistically. Their scoring offense is 115th out of 129. Their total offense is 120, and their rushing offense is 129. The Spartans are going to have to get offensive. And on the field here in San Jose, brand new turf, looking very nice. Used to be that old muddy grass look. Spartans have won the coin flip. They've chosen to defer, looking like Hawaii going to start the game on offense with the football. Hawaii likes that. Talked about in broadcast before, they've scored in the opening possession four out of five times. The skill players for San Jose State, brought to you by Hawaiian Financial FCU. It's the tight end. Much talked about Josh Oliver. Receivers are Holmes, Blackwell, Gaither, and Roberson. And then up front, the big boys for the Spartans. It, it's an offensive line that's been mixed and matched throughout the season. And we'll get to them, but first the quarterback. We can tell you this much. There will be more than one quarterback for San Jose State. We do not know which one will get the start. Montel Aaron is one of them. The other is Josh Love. So skill position players for the University of Hawaii. It starts with number five, John Ursua. He, Cedric Bird, Jojo Ward, Marcus Armstrong Brown, and Fred Holly will get the start at running back. And the quarterback for Hawaii is Cole McDonald. 1,759 yards, 20 touchdowns, just one interception, number one in the country in yards and TDs. This game here in San Jose State is about to get started. Spartans will kick it off and back to receive for Hawaii. Yeah, Justice Alfaga, who's been doing a good uh, job, Robert, as a kick returner, and even better as a punt returner, averaging 12 yards a carry, and usually back there with him is Cedric Bird. And Bryce Crawford, powerful leg for San Jose State. Amongst the top in the country, and kicking, punting as well. So he's opening kickoff. Goes about four or five yards deep into the end zone. Boy, will take a knee and they'll start on offense at the 25-yard line. And other big boys up front for the Rainbow Warriors, it's the two freshmen, Il Manning and Solo Vaipulu, J.R. Hensley, most experienced, Ta'aka Ta'anga Tulima at center, and Cole Leval at left tackle. Defensive line for San Jose State, and these boys, all seniors, and they bring it. Silosi Latu, Boogie Roberts, and Bryson Bridges. They're going to be a handful for Hawaii's offensive line. Two freshman starters, but they've gotten some good work. Yeah, they have. And Nick Rolovich said maybe the best front three they've played against this season. Well, on first down, 
Rainbow Warriors run the ball up the gut. Fred Holly. And he's still pushing for some extra yards. The linebacking court for San Jose State, Jamal Scott. Jesse o Osuna is the alpha dog. Ethan Aguayo, Kyle Harmon. And on the back end for San Jose State, it's Toussaint, Jonathan Leonard, Trey Webb, and Dakari Monroe, their best cover guy, has two interceptions so far this season. Interesting as Nick Rolovich scripts the opening plays that they would open up on first and 10 with a run. A pickup of four yards. Cole McDonald, familiar shotgun, looks left, throws left, completes the pass to Armstrong Brown. Just enough for a first down for the Rainbow Warriors. Yeah, just a little hitch, Robert, out to the left side. And the great thing about this Hawaii offense is they're getting the ball out in 1.8, 1 1.9, 2.0 seconds. They time every throw. And that makes it a lot easier for that offensive line knowing the ball's coming out quick. Oh, he runs on first down. Cole McDonald throws on second down to pick up that first down. Officials mark it near the 37 yard line. First and 10, Rainbow Warriors. Opening drive, quick throw right side. And the completed pass to JoJo Ward gets across the 45 46 yard line before he was brought down by Tucson. Yeah, and JoJo Ward may be the fastest guy linear. You're going to see on your screen just an eight or nine yard stop, knowing where the sticks are. And then he's trying to set the corner and break that tackle. Good poise by JoJo Ward. So first and 10, Hawaii again. Now watch the battle at the line of scrimmage. Big front three for the Spartans. And off the play action look. Cole McDonald thought about pulling out of the belly of Fred Holly, but keeps it in there. And he gets another first down for Hawaii. Yeah, and Holly just straight up on the inside zone, but does a nice job. And they say he doesn't do anything great, but he does everything well. He has quickness, he has patience, he has vision. And you can see that left A gap. Nice job by the center and the guard, double teaming the nose. And you'll see a lot of that all day, double teaming that big nose tackle. That's a good sign for Hawaii if they can get a hole like that against this defensive front. First and 10 from the 41 yard line. They give to Holly again. And Holly is brought down by Silosi Latu. Yeah, Latu originally from Tonga did not move to the United States till he was 16 years old. And he's 325 pounds. He only played rugby growing up, but he's quite a defensive lineman for the Spartans. Yeah, he moves it. Boogie Roberts, that nose guard, is an absolute beast. He'd be a handful for Taanga to Lima. Hawaii center. Barton show a blitz. They pull back instead. Freddie Holly helps pick up the blocking for Cole McDonald. He gets across the 35, maybe the 34 yard line. Yeah, and when talking about Cole McDonald to Brent Brennan, the head coach for San Jose State, he said the great, the good thing about this Hawaii offense, which June Jones never had, is they have a quarterback that can not only extend plays, but the quarterback counter, the read options, the RPOs, the danger of him with his legs has made this run and shoot even more explosive. And then he said, run and shoot my foot. Yeah. It's much more than that. It was almost like it's a marketing thing. They're doing so much more than just the pure run and shoot. Third and four, it's marked at the 35 yard line of San Jose State. McDonald looking to throw, has all day. Finally tucks it, lowers his head, and gets to the 30 yard line. It'll be first down, Rainbow Warriors. And you gotta cringe if you're Craig Stutzman, the passing game coordinator, as well as the quarterback coach, because Cole McDonald took a shot, but he knew where the sticks were. Really exciting, he's six foot four, he's 210 pounds, and I'll tell you, the offensive line doing a phenomenal job. The pocket is clean, and then there's nobody open. Good job in the back end by the Spartans, but McDonald knows where the first down markers are. And the Spartan defender is slow getting up, it's Trey Webb. Interesting, Robert, thus far in terms of the scripting of the plays. Really good job with the run, the pass, the protection's been clean. Receivers haven't got really wide open other than a couple of hitches in, uh, in, in, in curl routes, but right now it's going the way the Rainbow Warriors scripted. So not Trey Webb, it's 11, Jesse Osuna. 
And talking to San Jose State's defensive coordinator, he's the alpha dog amongst yeah. the linebackers. Yeah, Mark Odom said that he's not only tough, he's the guy that lines guys up, and he has two interceptions against two Pac-12 teams. So he's doing a nice job of playing both the run and the pass, so this would be a big loss for the Spartan defense. Osuna, 6 feet, 225 pounds. He's a junior. He has 22 tackles coming in. Ethan Aguayo, the other linebacker, has 25 stops for the Spartans entering tonight's game against Hawaii. Yeah, and the actual the team leaders, Jamal Scott, the other outside linebacker, number five. So nice. We talk about the front three, and rightfully so, because not only did Nick Rolovich say this may be the front best front three they played, but Derek Odom, the defensive coordinator, says when they go, we go. The best pass defense is a pass rush. And they try initially at the start of the game to see what they can get done with just a three-man front. If need be, they'll bring a linebacker from the outside, bring a linebacker, and blitz you the A-gap as well. No question. And, Robert, if they are successful with just the three-man rush, they're going to drop eight guys, and they're going to hope Cole McDonald runs the ball, and then they're going to try to put some helmets on him and see if they can take him out of this football game by being physical. Now, enough concern for Osuna, the head coach Brent Brennan in his second year is out there as he gets up and gets off the field under his own power. Brennan 2-14 and 14 in his second season. Overall, 1-8 in the Mountain West Conference. He and Hawaii head coach Nick Rolovich have formed a great relationship, friendship over the years. Both have a lot in common. Young, new FBS coaches. Offensive-minded. Yeah, offensive-minded took over programs that were struggling. And he believes... San Jose State could be good with the recruiting base they have around it here. So Cole McDonald fakes the give to the running back Holly and then quickly throws it to Cedric Bird. And Bird brought down at the 24-yard line. And one of the things Hawaii does as good as anybody in the country is the RPO, and you just got your first glance at that. And normally they throw the quick slant, but out of trips, the receiver wisely sits down inside of the nickelback, away from the middle linebacker and in front of the free safety, understanding where the window is. Now Cedric Bird, 40 receptions coming in. That ranks eighth in the country. Cole McDonald this time gives it and keeps it in the belly of Fred Holly, who may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage on second and three. Yeah, Jamal Scott doing a really nice job of understanding when it is run, read your keys. You're going to see number five, see the pulling guard, beat the offensive lineman in a really nice job of keeping his head and his eyes up. So he gets under the pulling lineman, sits in the hole and gets the stop on Fred Holly. No surprise for why you're running it. They're trying to make them play honest up front and not drop eight back. On third and four, Comedano looks deep. Comedano has a receiver, knocked away. Inside the five yard line by Trey Webb. Trey Webb, the toughest route to cover in quarters. Our deep halves is the corner route. He was on the upfield shoulder. He actually put his hand on the receiver's back, but did not affect the ability to catch the football, and then comes through with his right hand. Nice job, big pass breakup. Well, on third down, they make a play on defense, and there's a stretch and great defensive effort. Hawaii will go for it on fourth down. Hawaii, no surprise. Hawaii five for seven this season on fourth down. Well, McDonald looking to throw. He's looking deep. And in the middle of the field, completed to John Ursua. At the on the 10. field is completed pass for first down, Hawaii. Robert trips right, double in, middle area attack. Cole McDonald sees the underneath route is taken. Well, first of all, he holds the free safety, comes back to the trip side, and John Ursua, one of the nation's best wide receivers, goes up in traffic in just strong hands. And one-handed held on to it as he got body slammed on the turf here. It's first and 10 in market at the 13-yard line. Opening drive of the game. Paul McDonald in the belly, out of the belly, and then throws it intended for 
Ursua in the end zone. Ursua has a couple of drops early in the season, but I think this ball slightly thrown behind him. And if there was a string on it, I think Cole McDonald would like this one back. player downfield, number 75. Offense, five yard penalty. Still first down. And that can happen because of the mesh of Cole McDonald holding it in the running backs mesh point so long that the lineman now goes downfield and if he's not engaged over three yards that's an illegal offensive lineman downfield that's the freshman ill manning it backs away up to make it second and 15. they've been phenomenal in the red zone this season 22 of 24 with 18 of the 22 scores being touchdowns first and 15 from the 18 yard line opening drive play action and one-handed it's caught by JoJo Ward. Robert, that has to be a pre-snap thing because the wide receiver is pressing the X receiver, the outside man on the line of scrimmage. He read that play, and that could have been a pick six. That was an ill-advised throw by Cole McDonald. You're going to see more blue jerseys around than white jerseys, and the defensive back did not see the football. Now, thankfully for Hawaii, Dakari Monroe never saw the hot read, never saw it coming, ran straight up field. <laughs> Because the play action was to Fred Holly again. Yeah, and this Spartan secondary uh, defense has already more interceptions than they had all of 2017. Second and 13 from the 18 yard line. Cole McDonald, the left side, completed pass to the seven yard line, and then pushed back is Marcus Armstrong Brown. Brown, a big body type of guy. Hawaii's tallest receiver amongst the starting four. Basically, just. Posts up in the paint. Big, strong hands, big, strong target. It sets up third and four. And already only six minutes, five seconds remaining here in the first quarter. And this is the 14th play of this drive, Robert. This is the longest opening drive Hawaii's had. It was 805, not 605. One of the lights on the scoreboard, though. Eights look like sixes. And Cole McDonald looks like touchdown. Oh. He had a receiver open in the back end of the end zone. Now this is the decision. Normally you would kick in this situation and Nick Rolovich has elected to kick. Nobody accuses Rick, Nick Rolovich of reading chapter one in the, in the coaching manual. He's often gone for it on fourth down. You never know what to expect with a Nick Rolovich coach team and you're right. He didn't fly 2700 miles to not go for seven, especially how successful they've been on their opening drives. So Ryan Meskel, the planted to the 15 yard line. A field goal attempt of 25 yards. It's whistled good. Meskel is five for five on field goal attempts this season. Hawaii leads on the road, three, zero. Rainbow Warrior Football on Spectrum Sports is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii and Hawaii Honda Dealers. On the opening offensive series of the game, Cole McDonald and Hawaii with the ball march 15 plays and result a 25-yard field goal by Ryan Meskel. And the Rainbow Warriors lead 3-0 against San Jose State. Yeah, the first four games, Robert, as we all know, resulted in the opening drive being a touchdown. Last week, slightly underthrown ball. Duquesne makes a great play on the ball. Interception. This game, they kicked the a field goal. I think that's a win almost for San Jose State. Well, the kickoff here, the ensuing kickoff, is deep in the left corner, and the Spartans will bring it out across the 20-yard line and barely get into the 25 for San Jose State, where they will take over up front. For the Spartans, it's a mix and match group. Jackson Snyder has been the guy. He's now in left tackle. Kowalski, Robbins, Coleman, and Dino Motes are the blockers up front. And up front for Hawaii on defense, Zeno Choi, Bless Mitaala, Sam Akoteo, and Derek Thomas, defensive front. The quarterback to start here will be Josh Love, a junior from Mission Viejo, 6'2", 205, 347 yards passing, two touchdowns, three INTs coming in. And on first down, he throws it in the backfield, and an open field stop. Manu Hudson, Rasmussen, great job, because that was a lateral, Robert. That's in the backfield. So he gets into the backfield, tackled for loss. Starting linebackers 
for the University of Hawaii is Matautil Jelani Tavai, and the guy you just saw making that play, Manu Hudson Rasmussen. On the back end, Zach Wilson, Hicks, Okeke, and Ro Harris, the opposite corner. So Josh Love gives it Malik Roberson. Not much running room. Yeah, and guess who? Less meant to Ala Robert, who was last week's Hawaii Defensive Player of the Year, and that guy's really coming into his own. His ceiling, his potential is vast. It's just amazing how you see a guy who's a true freshman come into a, a Division I program like Hawaii and instantly is the strongest man on the team. Now, pressure on Love, he gets out of it, slides to his right, and completes it almost a lateral again. They may have got across the original line of scrimmage. It was completed to Roberson. He got run out of bounds at the 22-yard line. It'll force San Jose State to punt. Yeah, good job by Solomon Mautau Tia, who was injured last week. He had a little hip flexor back in the starting lineup, and that's nice to see because he's capable of big plays. Bryce Crawford, field goal kicker, punter, averaging 43 yards per attempt. And that's I think may qualify as a shank, but there are two flags thrown near the 25-yard line in the area where you'd expect it to go against the punting team. Personal foul. Leaping the shield, number 35, return team. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot. Automatic first down. You're going to see the Rainbow Warrior defender leap the shield, which you're not allowed to do on point after touchdowns, field goals, and punting. Now, doing the leaping was Jeff Keen. Went over the top. It's automatic now. Yeah, and Jeff Keen is the one who earlier this season blocked a punt. So he's been there before. He's taken a ball off the punter's foot. But he has to understand you cannot leap over. And that's just a safety rule that's been instituted based upon guys landing on their head. But what it does is it's enough of a penalty to put the Spartans offense back on the field with 6-12 remaining in the opening quarter. Hawaii ahead 3-0 after they go 15 plays to get a Ryan Mescal 25-yard field goal. False start. It'll be against San Jose State. And they've been struggling on their offensive line, Robert. They've taken a tackle, moved him to guard. There's only been one of the linemen that have started all three games at the same position. And the new offensive coordinator, Kevin McGiven, is trying to figure out who can protect, who's a better run blocker, and which quarterback is more efficient as he installs his offense being the first year as an offensive coordinator. And they've pretty much thrown out the tape against Washington State. I mean, they played every different angle and collapsed on their offense. And pressure by Gino Choi on Josh Love. And Josh Love on the money across midfield now. That pass completed, and there is a flag on the play. Now, Trey Hartley is the receiver who caught it, and he showed some wheels. You're going to see a nice little swing pass, and then Here's the hit, and it's out of bounds. It's a chicken wing, but it's on the white. Barely touched it. I mean, really? He pulled up. And it goes to show you, it doesn't have to be a violent hit. It just, if it's on the white, it's illegal. Personal foul, illegal block below the waist. Number 22, offense. That penalty will be enforced from the spot of the foul, 15 yards, still first down. Good job on the no call, out of bounds. So it's Ty Cottrell. He's a speedy guy, had a 96 yard kickoff return in their loss to Oregon. I'm thinking it cannot be against Okeke. He barely touched him, even though he was in the white, but illegal block by Cottrell. First and 14, backed up to the 38-yard line, and no place at all to run. Zeno Choi, 99, slanting inside, 
what an explosive play for the senior from Kaiser High School is getting better constantly. You're going to see him off the left side. Watch him come through with a little rip move. And you talk about hips, bring your feet, face up, big play, Zeno Choi. Now that play had absolutely no chance. And Brendan Manigo was a ball carrier. Josh Love overthrows his intended receiver, Malik Roberson, out of the backfield. Yeah. And 27, Mao Tautier applied the pressure, did a nice job of controlling his feet and also affecting the football throw by getting his hands up as he rushed in. So you see Brent Brennan, good friends with Nick Rolovich, but this is one of those where you're really good friends, you're very competitive. The third and 16, the Monago was a running back who got blown out by Gino Choi and pressure again to Love. And he throws it pretty much a lateral and pulling it in for San Jose State. His Roberson, he's got some shape to yeah. his running ability. He does, but I'll tell you, Panay Pavi in the open field, Robert made an outstanding tackle because that was a two way go. He broke down, he closed the gate, he kept his head up, wrapped up, grabbed some cloth. Big tackle for Panay Pavi. Fresh Crawford back to punt again. Boy, he penalized in his previous punt attempt. But jumping the shield. And Crawford this time gets all of it. And there is another flag near midfield. And somehow, Hawaii pulls it out from inside the five yard line. And doing damage on the run back is Justice Alcafa. Alcafa with a 12 yard average just increased that, but there are yellow flags all over this football field, and it usually means it's coming back. I mean, he was deep. Yeah, he's, you're supposed to let. Get your heels on the 10 yard line, and if it's over your head, let it go in the end zone. Take the ball at the 20. He broke every rule as a punt returner. So that's one of those where you go, no, 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 no. Yes, yes. Good good return by Algarve. It was a good return. But again, it was chapter one. Put your heels on the 10 yard line. Holding number 13. Receiving. That penalty will be enforced from the end of the kick. First down, Hawaii. The Time court. Corey Beckley is guilty of the holding infraction with 426 left here in the opening quarter. Hawaii leads San Jose State 3-0. Under normal circumstances, that guy, Hawaii head coach Nick Rolovich, nobody will accuse him of being normal. Hawaii will take over an offense first and 10 from their own two-yard line. When you've got the sickness of run and shoot, all that tells you is Hey, we could get 98 yards. Yeah. You have to have that mentality to run this style of offense. Yeah, and I worked for a guy for nine years. June Jones was the same way. They may throw the go from the two-yard line. You never know what Hawaii will do when they're backed up. It's 3-0. Hawaii leading San Jose State. 426 left in the opening quarter. Hawaii's first possession, they went 15 plays, starting from their own 25-yard line, and got a 25-yard field goal by Ryan Mescal. Paul McDonald's four yards deep in his end zone. He's got time. That ball tapped, tipped at the line of scrimmage. Rolling on the field is an incomplete pass, second down. And Bryson Bridges got his paw up and knocked it down. McDonald now half roll to his left, coming back to his right side. Good job by the defensive lineman. Penetrating, pushing the pocket back, and then getting the hands up. And that's saying something when your quarterback is 6'4. And he gets a pass tipped at the line of scrimmage. Second and ten. Again, Hoy backed up to the two-yard line. Cole McDonald three yards deep. Much quicker release this time. A completed pass to Jojo Ward, they get to cross the five yard line. Great tackle in the open field by John Toussaint. You're gonna, excuse me, Zaymore Ziegler. Beautiful job in the open field. That's the toughest tackle, is the hitch route. He misses that tackle and doesn't hold on to those ankles. Jojo Ward would make that play exciting. 98 yards and out the gate. 
Pickup of seven, third and three. Officials mark it at the nine yard line. Split receivers both sides. Paul McDonald, quick out, quick release, and a quick completion to Marcus Going Armstrong on the field Brown. Pass, first down, Hawaii. That's a first down for UH. Yeah, and Armstrong Brown running the quick slant again with the big body, knowing where the sticks are. One, two, three. And he's, you see it right here. The corner who's furthest off is usually the guy that gets thrown on. They would bump and run, doubling the slot, single coverage on the outside. Marcus Armstrong Brown showing capable hands. If you're a coach in this style of offense, you love seeing your quarterback and your receiving core reading exactly the same thing what a defense is showing them. On first and 10 away, run left side. Fred Holly may be a pickup of two yards. And Robert, the receivers have made a lot of mistakes, but it's been covered up by the accuracy of Cole McDonald. And if they continue to get on the same page in this run and shoot, where they're reading the same thing, it's gonna only get more efficient. And they're really good right now. The pickup of three on first down from the 20, second and seven. McDonald looks left side. Has time, looks on the middle of the field. A completed pass and then knocked free. Cedric Bird had it in his hands. Third down. Big time hit now. You talk about Jonathan Leonard, the free safety, because that was a beautiful throw, a deep dig over the middle, and you can't have a prettier ball thrown on stride, but that's what you do. You punish people as a free safety. If they catch it in front of you, you come up, you punch the ball out, big play for the Spartans. So you can no longer hat on hat in college football, but you can play hat on ball. Third and seven from the 20 yard line. Excellent defensive play for San Jose State. And then out thrown by Paul McDonald in and out of the hands of JoJo Ward. And back to defend again is Ziegler. Yeah, Ziegler, this is a speed break out, a 12 yard speed break out. Cole McDonald threw that before the receiver came out of his break and it was perfectly thrown. But that was perfectly covered, Robert. I can't tell you how hard it is, is to cover that speed break out. Give San Jose's back end a lot of credit. These are some athletes. So Stan Gaudian back to punt, standing on his own five yard line. He's the rugby style, goes back to his left side. The punt is pulled in, and then the ball carrier pulled down. Ikum Okeke, who is not only a starting strong safety, but one of the best cover guys that Michael Gobriel has. Great job, special teams. Cole McDonald on the money, little half roll to his right. He's a righty. He gets his hips opened up, and he throws just an absolute brilliant strike. But an even better play by, by the defender, because the defender now is looking through the upfield shoulder on the speed break, which is the hardest route to cover. And he does a phenomenal job. You'll see him coming through with a long arm, the left arm. Normally, it's the right arm. He comes through the receiver with that left arm, and that's a PBU. And that's the more Ziegler, and that's how it works, brought to you by Central Pacific Bank. And that guy, last night, got inducted into the San Jose State Hall of Fame. That super fan, Crazy George. It's not insulting to call him Crazy George. That's the name he likes. And that's the play that the defense likes. Zeno Choi again in the backfield. And I'll tell you what. The defensive line is slanting and penetrating, and how do you stop the inside run or the outside run? It's 99. Watch him just slice through, and then look it. He just has one arm. You talk about strength and tenacity, and just he will not let go of the jersey. It's like somebody tried to steal his Kelby, and Zeno Choi said, I'm not having it. You're going to love a kid like that who walks on, earns a scholarship, and makes big-time plays in the opponent's backfield. Off the play action, reverse now for San Jose State. An excellent defense by Hawaii. And now a flag is thrown. Bailey Gaither, 14 receptions coming in, 230 yards as a big play receiver. It gets the call on the reverse. The first two people who touched the ball on that reverse, quarterback and running back, took shots. 
really well defended for, from Hawaii. And I'll tell you what, Kevin McGiven, the offensive coordinator, going to the 1,000 greatest plays in football. After the play is over, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So getting the call there is he came okay. And, and, and look at it. It's not violent. I don't know if he could have held up that anymore. That foul was on number 32. Maybe the extension of the hands. 22 is the call. There is no 32. So we are over. Right? Our first down here after the penalty, Josh Love. Looking for some love deep down the field. Inside the 20. It's a completed pass to the same gun at Gaither. First down of San Jose. You talk about just running by a defensive back, using your speed. He is the big play wide receiver. And when you asked Robert, the offensive coordinator, when you got to go deep, who do you go to? He said, this is the guy, number 84. He's got the big play capability. And that time he connected with his quarterback, Josh Love. Now, Love entered only a 48% passer. That's a big bomb. First and 10 for the 18. High snap. Spartans run and go to the outside. Robinson pushed out by Keenan Hicks. Yeah, and we haven't talked a lot about Hicks. And he does a lot of things correctly. He's got the length in the secondary. And that was a nice job of inside out tackling. So not Robinson on that play. He's back in now. But it was. Manigo. And now with Roberson, pick up for San Jose State. And what a pass inside the five yard line. Yeah, Love is on the money there because that window was small. It was barely thrown over the linebacker's head. And I'll tell you, Love did a phenomenal job against Oregon. He had 238 yards passing and one touchdown. But you're going to see right now. Him just allowing the receiver to get behind Jelani Tavai. And Jelani Tavai is six feet four, four inches tall. And with that, that'll be the final play of the first quarter here. With the Spartans inside the five yard line, off that great pass play by Josh Love to Trey Hartley. And after one quarter, Hawaii leads on the road in the Mountain West Conference, 3 0. Tonight's Jack fact is about stingy defense. Rainbow Warriors last week held Duquesne to 166 yards total offense. Hawaii's best defensive effort since holding Lamar to 127 yards on September 15, 2012. Jack fact brought to you by Jack in the Box. Yeah, and Robert, you talked about great defense. Right now, Hawaii, after one quarter, They've only given up minus three yards rushing. It was those two big pass plays that allowed the Spartans to be down here inside the 10-yard line. They're doing a great job against the run, but they got to shut down the pass. And Zeno Troy may be having the best game of his career at defensive line. He's a captain and a rubber suit. He's hit hard by Solomon Matautia and Eperone Mornanu. Yeah, and you're seeing defensive lines slanting, stunting, and you're going to see Solomon Maltatia stay square and then play off the low block. And I watched them work on that with Mark Banker before the game, the linebacker coach. Solomon Maltatia is a good inside linebacker. Who had a phenomenal end to 2017, last four or five games. And San Jose State, they go big. Guess who? Boogie. They go big for the touchdown. And we're talking about a low. It's Boogie Roberts, defensive lineman. And that's pretty much unstoppable in yeah, short distance. Yeah, Robert, Robert, he's 266, but he looks good in the uniform. He looks like a fullback, and you can see him lower his pads. And at first, you don't think that's the big nose tackle because his running style is so conducive. He has played a little bit of running back before, but Getting into the end zone is every nose tackle's dream. His position coach, very familiar to Hawaii football fans, and Jose Umalu, former University of Hawaii defensive end, Bradford graduate, 18 years now, and assistant coach in college football, started at Cal Poly, bounced around, was here before at San Jose State, and Oregon State, and now back here with the Spartans. And the thing I love about Joe is, 
he is the point person now for San Jose. He's already offered Stanley McKenzie a 2020 St. Louis High School defensive lineman a scholarship. So he's going to be in Hawaii looking to get some great local players here with the Spartans. Bryson Crawford, the extra point up, and it is good. And the Spartans on their homecoming take the lead against the Rainbow Warriors 7-3. Spartans go 68 yards on seven plays, two minutes, 45 seconds off the clock. And the quarterback, Josh Love, slow start, and then he got rolling. Yeah, he got rolling, four for five, 75 yards, and you're going to see after this reverse, two passes. This one, the long one, the bomb, perfect on strike ball, beautiful throw and catch, and then the quick slant. We well, first see another outside run. Kalen Hicks doing a nice job of knocking the running back. And here's the slant, the inside position, well thrown. And then it's Boogie Knights coming up. This guy, Robert, does hot yoga. And he says it's harder than football workouts. And I can attest to that. Hot yoga is tough. How often do you do hot yoga then? Five times a week. Do you wear the whole tights and everything? Leotards? Not the tights. Okay. And a kickoff return here, and soon kickoff of Funga across the 30 to the 34-yard line. Algafa does a nice job, Robert, of setting it and then exploding through the holes. And he's tough. I mean, he's played so many different positions. He's a utility type of guy, but they're saving Cedric Bird for the offense, and Algafa does a nice job of kickoff return. Now, Algafa gets it out to the... 34 yard line, first and 10 Hoy. Cole McDonald looking to throw. There's pressure up the middle. He completes it quickly and gets it to the outside receiver screen, the bubble to Ursua. Yeah, Ursua coming back to the football, the number two receiver. And then the linemen come downfield, but a really nice job of not only responsible, the defensive linemen seeing it's a quick throw, go down the line of scrimmage as the linebackers get horizontal in the secondary closed. We've seen that successful all season long, not today. Just a two-yard pickup ahead to the 35-yard line. Well, McDonald looks left side, gets a good block by Fred Harley. And a receiver open, and JoJo Ward. Almost made a one-handed grab. Yeah, but the ball was thrown behind him. And another throw, and Cole McDonald's had some beautiful throws that have been knocked out by defensive backs. But that ball is thrown behind JoJo Ward. You'll see right here, he has to come with it with his left hand. And it's behind him and high. And Ward created separation. Had lots of room for McDonald to complete it. Left hash mark at the 35 yard line. It's third and eight for Hawaii. McDonald has time. Look to the outside, and both receivers went inside. Cole McDonald threw it outside. Yeah, and Ward's looking back to McDonald, and they're motioning to each other like on that particular coverage, JoJo, you need to slide into the next window. That's not man, that's zone. So to this point, we could say as Cole McDonald is in conversation with JoJo Ward and Craig Stutman as quarterback coach, it's not been a well-oiled machine offensively to start two games in a row here. And Gowdy in the punt gets all of it. It's inside the 20-yard line. Excellent return for the San Jose State. Now Bailey Gaither during the returning for San Jose State. And this brought to you by Heineken. Inside the numbers, the number is five. A white team is to start the season five and one or better since turning division one. It was 1981, 88, 89, 1992. That's the Holiday Bowl team. And 2007, the 12 and 0 regular season, the ensuing loss in the Sugar Bowl. Yeah, and even though I'm old, Robert, I 81. just remember the 92 and the 2007 arguably the two greatest teams in Hawaii history. So this is a great start for this Rainbow Warrior football program. Were you not on that 81 team? I was on that 81 team, but I'm too old to remember that. <laughs> Only five times Hawaii started at five and one. 
That 81 team was Gary Allen, David Tolomu, Mark Tuine, Jesse Sapolu. I mean, you talk about a great team. They ended up being nine and three. No bowl game because there weren't bowl games for bowl eligible teams with seven wins. And as good as Gary Allen was, with the number of yards he put up, as, as, as they keep going up, it's a vivid memory of the breakaway mesh jersey number four. David Tolomu. That jersey was shredded every Saturday night at Aloha Stadium. And Josh Love is finding success down the field, and that's the much talked about tight end. Josh Oliver, number one in the FBS last season with touchdown receptions, had 19 coming into this game. Yeah, and 19 also leads tight ends in FBS football as of today. And I'll tell you one thing, if you're going to get off the bus, 6'5", 250, yeah. can run, can block, consummate tight end. Scouts are here watching this young man. He's playing at the next level. And there are a bunch of scouts we saw before the game here in Channel 8. Josh Love takes the pitch. And that pass deflected by Matautia. And he had help with... Padello. Yeah, Padello doing a nice job. And when you talk to Jacob Euro, Padello's coach, he says not only is he explosive and our best pass rusher, but come to a meeting and look at his notebook. He is so thorough. He's so consummate. It means so much to him. To me, that's the fabric of this football team. And you're going to see 27 right now. Watch. When you're six foot two and a former defensive back, you know how to drop into pass lanes. Go off the play action. Jelani Tavai blew that up. I'm not sure Josh Love wanted to pull it out of the mesh. Jelani Tavai forced him to do it. Yeah, and you'll see Tavai on the list for tackles for losses. He's closing in. If he gets 9.9 .9 tackles per game the rest of the season, he'll be the all-time leading tackler, taking the place of Solomon Elamimium, the CFL legend. Jelani Tavai is everywhere. And 9.9 .9 for that guy? It's doable. It's doable. 39. For the Spartans, they're right at midfield. Flags fly, false start. It'll be against San Jose State. Robert, the last two years, Tavai has had 120 tackles. Number 57, offense, five yard penalty, still third down. Now, to be precise, it works out to 124 tackles in 2017, 129 tackles in 2016. Phenomenal numbers. And people forget he was suspended for the first game of this season, and yet he's still double digits every time he's on the field. Now third and 19. Away puts pressure, left side pass completed. Josh Love to Laquan Blackwell. Only six catch of the year. Flags fly again. What's impressive when you look at the San Jose State roster on offense is the receiving core. You got the tight end who's 6'5. Holmes is 6'2. Austin Lau 6'3. Gaither is 6'5, 220 pounds. They've got size, length, they can stretch a field, and they're a tough receiving core. Holding. Personal foul against San Jose State. That's the sixth penalty now. I know Brent Brennan is a disciplinarian, and he knows that you win football games by being disciplined, especially against this Hawaii team. It was on the back end of a play, the backup center, Kyle Hoppy, was hoping not to get caught. That forces the Spartans to punt. Crawford standing back on his own 25-yard line. It's a line drive rip and taking it at the 10 yard line for Hawaii is Justice Ungafa. Robert, sometimes as a special teams coach, you don't want your punter to kick it so long that it outkicks the coverage. He did that, but his coverage team backed him up. He gets down there. It's 7 3 here in the second quarter. Hawaii trails. This week's top three brought to you by First Hawaiian Bank is NCAA receiving yards. On top of that list right now is Hawaii's John Ursula. Number one in the country, 623 yards. Number one in the country, receiving touchdowns with nine. Number one in the country with total touchdowns 
That's 10. Number one in the country with points scored so far at 60. Yeah, and he's unstoppable, Robert. Uh, Balitnikov, watch this. Also, the Polynesian Hall of Fame college football player, watch this, and he's a legit candidate. First and 10 from the 11 yard line for Hawaii. Cole McDonald swings it right side, and John Ursua in his own backfield dropped down for a loss of two yards. And the more Ziegler, yet another stop defensively. Yeah, ZZ, I mean, this guy has shown up all over the field because he fights off the stock block and knows that he has to keep his outside arm free and he gets his head across the bow. That is a phenomenal play. I'm so impressed by these two corners. They make open field tackles and the coordinator, they're golden. It's a specialty. It's a back end of a defense. A loss of two. Coming down to looking to stretch the field. Had two receivers in the very same area, and it kind of was in between Bird and Ursua. Again, it's not the well oiled machine that we saw in the first four games. Yeah, we got to talk to Derek Odom about being with June Jones in the run and shoot and how at SMU. At SMU, how that would help him conceptually. And he says, we have to hope that they screw it up because they are so good in this hybrid run and shoot with a quarterback that can do so many things. I'll tell you what, he hasn't slept a lot this week. No. And Hawaii needs to wake up and not sleep a lot in third and 12 here. They go quarterback draw, and Cole McDonald tripped up at the 13-14 yard line. The difference in this game has been the boogeyman, Boogie Roberts, on a boogie night, scoring the first touchdown of his career on the first carry of his career and I was defensive buddies making stops as well and you can see 28 so that's quarterback lead they add an extra number and when are they going to run the quarterback when it's important to move the chains of scoring place they do not want Cole McDonald running the ball recklessly but they needed something but give Spartans defense a lot of credit so Stan Gaudi and his punt effort goes out of bounds near the 43 44 yard line across midfield and it was Jamal Scott making the stop on Cole McDonald. Spartans will take over as the officials mark it off, and the Spartans should get it near the 45 yard line. Big time win for Derek Odom in that defense. Joe Sayamalo, the defensive line coach. This means a lot to this team because even though they're 0 3, Rolovich said, best 0 3 team in the country. There's athletes everywhere. But this is the start of the Mountain West Conference for them. Now, statistically, it has not been an impressive season so far for San Jose State. Now, Josh Love, looking deep down the left side, has a receiver open and has a touchdown by Gaither. Gaithers, you mentioned 6'5", Robert, but what impressed me is you said 220. And we talked about Josh Love being a get-off-the-bus guy, but I'm sure the scouts are here to see that speed, that size, that length, and that ability to run by cornerbacks. He has shown a burst. And it was a high snap. Josh Love stood in the pocket, and when his receiver got separation against Zach Wilson, he laid it out in front of him, and Gaither went and got it. Season long, 55 yards. That's Gaither now being carried off the field by his teammates. Not sure hamstring, not sure injury, but that pass is good for 55 yards, and they need that young man because he can run by people. And now he's got one guy carrying him off the field. Is it safe to predict that we may only see Josh Love at quarterback today? Uh, the, the way he started, yes. So the extra point now, Bryce Crawford, if it splits the uprights, San Jose State would have an 11 point lead. It does, and they do. It's 14 3 Spartans on homecoming. Robert, Josh Love, yeah, great and, touch. Yeah, and Zach Wilson has two interceptions and been more consistent than Eugene Ford, but I think right there, it might be the ankle, but got a good job getting into the end zone. You're going to see right now, that's called the bail technique. You're supposed to be able to run with receivers. But Gator's showing really long stride, six foot five, and a powerful, explosive type of receiver. And immediately grabbed that left ankle area upon scoring that touchdown. Josh Love, seven of nine, throwing the ball 
one hundred sixty five yards and that fifty five yard touchdown connection with Gaither. We thought for sure we'd at least see Montel Aaron at some point in this game. It's their fourth game of the year for San Jose State and in every game they played at least two quarterbacks in one game. They played a third quarterback get some snap for Michael Carrillo. Very impressive in terms of trajectory of the deep ball and a very catchable ball by Josh Love standing in there sneaky athleticism. Brent Brennan said he's not a great athlete but he can move around in the pocket. The Crawford the ensuing kickoff puts away at the two yard line on brings it out across the 20. Breaks a would-be tackle, still on his feet, across the 40, across the 45-yard line, and then brought down near the 47. Excellent effort by Angafa. Michael Gobriel, the special teams coach, really impressed by not only the blocking, but you're going to see the want to Angafa staying in bounds as he goes down the sidelines. Wow, that's athleticism. And guys are staying with the block longer than the opponent. Excellent balance by Angafa. Took it at the two yard line. Brings it up across the 45, marked at the 47. Hawaii needs to show a sign of life on offense. First and 10. But no. Blown up in the backfield. And the boogeyman. No, it's Bryson Bridges. It's nine, not eight. And Robert, you've done a lot of football games before. This front three all has single digits, which means not only are they seniors, but they're big time players. And you'll see the inside move by the defensive lineman. Really nice call in terms of slanting into that B gap and keeping your shoulder square and penetrating. Bryson Bridges already has two and a half tackles for loss and one sack this season. It's a good sign for San Jose State on defense. If that front three can be disruptive to Hawaii's offense. Lots of two, maybe three yards. Cole McDonald looking down the field. There's nobody home. Three defenders near the 20. The one receiver in that area broke it off near the 35 yard line. And you're right, Robert, because do the math, right? If you can control the front, and there was a big time push by Bridges, excuse me, Boogie Roberts inside on the center, and then they're dropping eight. And in the run and shoot, the back does not come out. It's eight on four. And that's an advantage for San Jose. Hawaii has never seen a front three that can apply pressure with just three guys, three seniors. And it's going to be a tough day, a long day, if they continue to drop eight in cover. Third and 12. From the 45 yard line. McDonald looking left. Has all day. Right side. Receiver covered. Covered well. And the intended receiver is Stubblefield, I believe. And John Toussaint, it was Devin Stubblefield. Robert, after that kickoff return, Hawaii almost in four down territory. They need to move the sticks, and San Jose State responds. Three plays and out. Hawaii now two for eight on third down, and that's something they've got to improve. So Stan Gaudian from his 25 yard line. Get to the end over end and back to receive for San Jose State inside the 10 yard line and then breaking a tackle across the 20 and still on his feet across the 30 yard line. Doing damage for the Spartans, just tied for trail. So he's the guy we talked about. Had a big 96 yard kickoff return against the Ducks. Yeah, tackled at the four yard line, didn't get in the end zone, but you're going to see missed tackles. Sure, he's going to spin. Sure, he's got good vision and good strength, but Hawaii's missing too many tackles, and that happened on special teams last week. In Michael Gobriel, the special teams coach, was very concerned with his coverage teams. So here we go. Spartans will take over from their own 30 yard line. It'll be first and 10 on homecoming on their home field. They lead 14 to 3. Rainbow Warriors drew first blood. Opening drive 15 play, 25 yard field goal. Josh Love to throw. Had a receiver in separation to his right side near the 40 yard line. And threw him wide right. A little bit of press, pressure by 54. 
Lesman Ta'ala, the true freshman from American Samoa, and a little bit of Zeno Choi, too. Those two guys have been showing up. Spartans have had nine different first time starters at this level of college football this season over the first three games. It's a good stretch for them. Tonight starts three consecutive home games. And Roberson turns the corner. The flag is thrown. Multiple flag. Not Roberson, but Manigo. Yeah, Josh Oliver 89 on the stock block probably was holding. That's the reaction by Oliver. You're going to see Robert. <laughs> You talk about strength on the perimeter because usually defensive backs deal with wide receivers. Watch 89 right now get his hands inside and basically that's Bellator. That's UFC. That's a body slam. Manu Hudson Rasmussen was the victim. Bellator in town this week here in San Jose State. In fact, the legend himself, Vandalay Silva, is staying at the same hotel that we're staying in in downtown San Jose. Yeah, and Lima McFarland in town too, the Hawaii champ, so we may get together with her later on this evening. Second and 13, loss of three there. And a quick dump off in their own backfield. That's more loss. There's a loose football, but I believe the whistle was already blown. Going on the field as the runner was down. Third down. Yeah, Kaimana Padella does a nice job of reading this. Jelani Tavai as well. Little funnel screen. Now it's third and 50. Hawaii desperately needing a stop on defense. Have, and everybody had a hard time stopping the run. It's the pass. They cannot allow Josh Love to complete a deep downfield and get chunk plays. Love has time. Had a receiver open. And connects with it. Josh Oliver breaks a tackle across the 15 and knocked out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. Ikum Okeke, a touchdown saving stop. And you mentioned the general manager for the Cleveland Browns being here, John Dorsey. And that guy, 89, is showing speed, athleticism, strength. And we talked about him as a great blocker earlier in his career, but watch this as he just shucks the tackler off. And then you see the long striding 6'5", 250 pound, best looking tight end in the Mountain West Conference. I mean, he shook the would-be tackle. And it turned on some afterburners that not many people would believe he possessed had they not seen it for themselves. And that's a career long, Robert. We talked about this year being an FBS leader. That one, 70 yards. You get a tight end. And we were talking with the San Jose State coaches, especially head coach Brent, about Hawaii's history, no matter what era, what team, in defending a tight end. Hawaii's often been hit hard by a tight end. And they're running the ball to the right side of San Jose State, Monico. <laughs> At the loss of yard, it was second and goal from the five. He gets pushed back to the seven yard line. Tavai showing responsibility. That's a misdirection. You have to stay at home if you have force. 31 is going to do his job. His 111. He just hopes that the rest of this Rainbow Warrior defense does their 111 because you can always count on 31. 624 left in the opening half. Spartans lead 14 3. It's third and goal for the seven yard line. Josh Love looks right side. Head receiver, Josh Oliver open and over through him. Defender in the end zone for Hawaii, Ro Farris fell down. Yeah, and Ro Farris is six foot two inches tall. And when you look at that whole Rainbow Warrior secondary, they go six, six, one, six, two across the board. Zach Wilson now the new starter at 5'11. What did Brent Brennan say? They have Pac-12 length. And that's important. Abraham Ilamimian has gotten some length to cover some of these tall receivers. It's Ro Ferris, it's Hicks, it's Okeke. And it's Bryson Crawford. For the field goal tip, it is up. It is good. And now the Spartans lead 17 to 3. 6-12 left in the opening half.
Back here live in San Jose, not good news for the Spartans. That's the big playmaker. Bailey Gaither being carted off the field, scored a touchdown, big play touchdown, immediately grabbed the left ankle. And this game so far, 17 to 3, 6 12 left in the first half. It's been a tale of two different quarterbacks and not in favor of the one you might think would be ahead. Sparks QB Josh Love, 9 for 14, 233 yards. Hawaii's Cole McDonald. 10 for 20 for 63 yards. So this has been by far the biggest struggle for Cole McDonald in this Rainbow Warrior offense. They'll adjust, but they got to adjust now. They need some momentum. And we're talking about the number one quarterback in the country, statistically, in the Poots kickoff by San Jose State. Hawaii will take over just short of the 35-yard line. Cole McDonald, number one in yards. Cole McDonald, number one with 20 touchdowns to only one interception number two in the country in total offense per game over 391 yards that number is nowhere near what Hawaii fans have seen over the first five games yeah 50 percent passing only 63 yards no touchdowns and Cole McDonald is starting to get national publicity just like Cole Brennan did in 2006 which parlayed the 2007 Heisman Trophy finalist but Right now, they just have to take one play at a time and get some offensive win. And, and some of the snaps have been nobody home between the receiver, the communication, and Cole McDonald. First and 10, 33 yard line. Boy runs the ball to the right side and doing the running, the different face in Elijah Dale. Elijah Dale did not play earlier in the season, but Brian Smith, the running back coach, thinks he has big play potential. He had a broken finger, now fully healed. We saw his athleticism last week when he jumped over a player against Duquesne, and he can take it a long way, so kind of mixing it up at running back. And like Choi, like Pudella, walk on, earned himself a full scholarship. Dale gets two yards, second and eight, 35 yard line. Away trail 17 3. McDonald has all day. And it completes to Ursua across midfield. Rolling Get out the field to the 41. First down. And that, that's a credit to the offensive line to give Cole McDonald that kind of time. Yeah, and it's only a three man pass rush, but they're spying somebody on Cole McDonald because he's that good of a runner, which now creates a seven man drop. Good job of Ursua finding the window. Been relatively quiet as number five for Hawaii. First and 10 from the 41 yard line. 505 left in the first half. Oh, it runs right side. It's Dale across the 35. McDonald on a keeper. Well, McDonald, the keeper. Dale completely fooled me. Because he kept running. And that's what he's supposed to do, Robert. But nobody keeps it in the mesh. The taller you are at 6'4, you can shuffle down the line of scrimmage and it confuses people and then wisely hook slid. He, he dropped his shoulder earlier in this game. And then immediately you saw conversation on the sideline with quarterback coach Craig Scottsdale. A gain of seven by McDonald. And this time he sticks it in the belly and leaves it there. I realize that Dale and Dale at best got back to the line of scrimmage. Yep, two linebackers, 53 and number five for San Jose, Jamal Scott doing a really nice job of keeping his outside shoulder free. And that's why he's the leading tackler, always around the football. Good things happen. The third and three. It's at the 34-yard line for Hawaii head coach Nick Rolovich and his offense. 3.51 left in the first half. Hawaii down two touchdowns. They go left side. Elijah Dale doing work in maybe a yard short which would make Nick Rolovich take a step Rolling back the field is the and runner think short about of the it. line again it'll be fourth down right now Robert the trenches are being won with the guys in blue the seniors and those three guys with single digits have started almost three years consecutively that's the heart and soul of this football team a way to go for it fourth and one from the 32 yard line entering this game they were 70 percent on fourth down seven for ten they scored three touchdowns on fourth down this season and there's a pitch play mcdonald to dale 
near the 20 yard line and then run out of bounds. That's speed option. That's not run and shoot. And when there's only one guy, as Cole McDonald counts on the end of the line of scrimmage, he's going to hold this ball as long as possible, sweat the defender, 53, but there's nobody for the pitch. That's what makes the run and shoot so dangerous. Speed option, quarterback counter, RPOs. It's, 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 when he makes the right read, Cole McDonald, it's money. That's the conversation yesterday. Run and shoot my foot. It's a whole lot more than a run and shoot. It's first and ten from the 18th. Cole McDonald gets the right side, dumps it off to Dale, and he's gone across the five, diving into the end zone. Touchdown for Rainbow Warriors. We talked about Dale's explosiveness. You're going to see him make a tackler miss in the open field. And again, this is not real run and shoot football either, because the back came out initially. The fifth receiver in the formation. Cole McDonald makes a nice throw. So Dale does not have to break stride. It's right on his chin. And here you see the explosiveness in the open field. The walk on from San Francisco City College. And he has Ali Matao at linebacker standing waiting for him. And Dale put a move on him to get free. The extra point is up. It's good by Hawaii. Now it's 17 10, 221 left in the first half. Seven plays, 67 yards, and it's just what this Hawaii offense needed. Even though they weren't successful running the football, so to speak, they got in the end zone. First touchdown as a Rainbow Warrior for Eliza Dale. And he showed an excellent burst after turning the corner, catching a dump off pass by Paul McDonald. Is that the spark? It's the way football team needed. Trailing 17 to 3. It's a great response by the Rainbow Warriors. For the March it down the field here. Yeah, and I don't think Hawaii panics in this situation, Robert. And I talked to Nick Rolovich and they're using analytics in terms of what's working down and distance type of calls. And when you talk to Stutzman, they also use Exos Thunder videos so they can watch highlights and they can give notes to the players. This is a well-coached football team and they know how to score points. The line drive kickoff by Matt Scale. An excellent coverage by Hawaii on special teams. Making a stop Devin at the 25-yard line, Devin Stubblefield. Yeah, and I talked to Michael Gobriel and he's surprising because he's a former wide receiver, a much heralded wide receiver coming out of St. Louis High School. He's one of the best cover guys, and you kind of expect that because he's a physical receiver and he's athletic. We saw him get physical earlier when it looked like he was going to get called for a helmet to helmet contact on special team. Not afraid to stick his head, stick his shoulders, stick his body in there to make a play on special team. 18 yard touchdown from Cole McDonald to Eliza Dale. Cut the deficit to 17-10. And right now there's 214 left here in the first half. Josh Love has time. Pressure gets out of what would be set. And it finally dropped down. And he coughed up the football. A loose ball near the field is a fumble recovered by San Jose State. Second down. So Matal Tia. Hawaii has called their first charge timeout of the half. This timeout will be 30 seconds in length. And Akoteo knock it free, and Matal Tia thought he had a shot at it. It was recovered by the left guard and Troy Kowalski. A good call, because Matal Tia knocked that ball out and almost recovered it. Really a nice tackle in the open field. And timeout called by Hawaii. 2 on one left here in the first half. 6'2", 205 pounds, but Mao Tao Tia knocks that ball out, and then he sees it, tries to grab it and cradle it. Good job of the offensive lineman for San Jose getting downfield and covering up that fumble. It's a great one-two punch defensively. Mao Tao Tia makes the hit. Akoteo reaches in as well. One loosened it. The other forced him to puff it up. It's still a gain of two. Second and eight from the 28 yard line. 201 left in the opening half here. Spartans run left side. 
and doing the running for San Jose State. In Manigo, where is it, Robo? Hawaii, second charge of the half, 30 seconds in the With Malik Roberson. Second time out charge to Hawaii. And you mentioned earlier, it's mostly been a half that Josh Love plays. And then they evaluate him, and then they come back with their relief pitcher in the second half. But I'm thinking after this first half, Robert, I'd be shocked if he doesn't start in the third quarter. Especially if, you, if you're a quarterback and you can find a consistency throwing the deep ball, yeah. you open eyes amongst your coaching staff, amongst your teammates, more importantly. Yeah, and he played the first half against UC Davis and led the team to three touchdown drives. He started five times in 2017. This guy's played a lot of football. And it's all grown things for this offense. It's finding their own identity, who they are, compared to who they want to be, which they don't know yet. Because the evaluation process is still ongoing. Josh Love, quick strike, slam, and completed. And making the catch is Blackwell. Robert, that ball came out tight, and it came out with great throw. Spartans go hurry up, 141 and counting. They lead 17-10, Josh Love. Track it, track it, track has time, Hawaii only rushes three. Excellent coverage, down the field. Look at who's doing the coverage. Kaimana Padel, he's a defensive end, and if he's rushing, he has pill responsibility on the back. Running stride for stride with a running back, and he's 225 pounds now. I mean, Malik Robertson is excellent out of excellent out of the backfield. Kaimana Padilla went step for step down the Spartan sideline with great technique, pressing out, eyes back like a DB. Boy brings pressure this time up the middle and completed pass to the big guy. As Tolliver finally knocked out of bounds across the midfield. The history of Hawaii defending a tight end. It's not pretty. No, it's not. And the reason for that, Robert, is when you have a run and shoot offense, that's the kind of guys you recruit. Not a lot of tight ends to emulate the scout team. Therefore, they don't practice against it. And it's been a long history of tight ends abusing Hawaii's defense. It's hard to practice 6'5, 260 when you're not 6'5, 260. Josh Love has time again. He's looking deep down the field. Has a receiver who was covered that time, Trey Hartley, defended by Okeke. Yeah, you know, Okeke, nobody's running by Okeke, the linear fastest guy on this football team. He had just missed the tackle earlier on the tight end. He plays well against triple option teams, and he plays great on special teams. One thing you're not going to do is run by 22. To both Okeke and he are products of fame. Bishop Gorman in Las Vegas. And neither one was happy with that. They started over three. That's what I promise. Or two. No, they're not, but that's a proud player. Oh, Chris Brown, coaching linebackers. Anui Correa now coaching the defensive line. A lot of Hawaii athletes that have transferred there. That's the ninth island. No, they weren't happy that their school were 0 and 2, but they rep the gear daily. Proud Bishop Gorman alone. 51 seconds and counting. Left in first half. There's pressure from the outside. And Josh Love takes a shot and he still delivers. Ty Cottrell across the 30 yard line. You talk about Cottrell, I talk about Padello. Inside move, hit Josh Love right in his rib pads. That guy can rush the pass. And Padello, also Cheyenne Sanitoa, putting a lick on Josh Love. Oh, it's been an excellent showing by number 12. Yeah, and an excellent show by 96. Watch him come and just lay a little love to the San Jose State Court. Podello has no love for a quarterback. It is the quarterback's name is Love. Yeah, and we talked about last year being the best pass rusher, but since he's gained another 10, 15 pounds, he's able to play the run. And what he does is he has that upfield speed move that tackles watch all season long, and then he comes underneath with a speed move. Now you often see through the history, when you're a walk-on, any program, not just the one, when you get the scholarship, a lot of people expect 
uh, not so much the same type of effort that got you the scholarship. There was never a concern that 96 would beat that guy, and he's never been that guy. Yeah, Mimi Lani, they have a great program, and guys like Dayton Faruta and Kaimana Padello are the heart and soul of this football team. And there's another Podello, KK, member of the Hawaii National Guard. Josh Love has a receiver open. In and out of the hands of Laquan Blackwell. Blackwell needs to make that catch, even when it's cover three and he knows the free safety should be breaking on the football right through his hands. Touchdown? I think so. He's going to split the safety in the corner. He was open. He had separation. Second and 10 from the 31 yard line. 32 seconds left in the first half. Spartans lead 17 10. 0 3 this season. This is their homecoming. Josh Love has time, looks right side. He tucks it. He runs with it across the 25, takes a slide, and then down at the 22, 24 yard line. Actually, it's where you first touch the turf and not where you stop the slide. Timeout, San Jose State. First charge of the half, 30 seconds in length. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 21 seconds. 21 seconds, please. So Brent Brennan has a history of offense in his stops as an assistant coach in his career journey. So we were talking to Kevin McGivens, who's the OC. Sometimes you wonder, how hard is it to be an OC when the head guy is offensive minded? He kind of likes it. And the difference was, and we were dying laughing, in one of their previous stops, Brennan used to work for McGivens. McGivens was the OC. He was the receivers coach. No, the roles have changed it. Role reversal, Robert. You're right. He used to yell at his young assistant coach, and now that's his boss. But I think when you're a young head coach and all the responsibilities you have, it's good to have a veteran offensive coordinator because there's so much to do for Brent Brennan building this program back. 32, 23-yard line, 20 seconds left here in the first half. That pass completed. Josh Love. Field is a completed pass for a first down. To Oliver at the 20-yard line. And that's the physical matchup I'm looking for. Oliver with 22, Ikemo Keke. Ikemo Keke is 6'1". He used to be 220. He slimmed down to about 205. He can run, but he's got his hands full with a 6'5", 250-pound tight end. Look at the, the length, the size. Oliver has put together. Josh Love. I have no idea what he was throwing at. He was looking for his favorite receiver who was double covered. Yeah, almost tripled. You had Jelani's Tavai running down the seam. You had the two safeties overlapping. Oliver, four targets already. Receptions, Robert, 111 yards. This is his best game as a Spartan. And he looks the part. I mean, that's a wow. Second and 10 here, 20 yards left. Love, middle of the field, defended well. Rose Harris. Intended for Trey Hartley. And guess what? In the backfield, guess who's on his backside? And guess who's part of that tackle? Padello, 96. But Padello putting a hit again on Josh Love. Great coverage by Roe Farris. He is the shutdown corner. Abraham Elamim is as good as he's coached. Over the past 10, 15 years, think about the tight ends that always fixed. There was one, I, I'm drawing blank on his name. Florida Atlantic. Yeah, and that was an FCS school that yeah. had San Jose has taken the second yards. charge time out of the half. This will be a 30 second timeout. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock. And that's a freak tight end. I think back to when you were coaching as an assistant at University of Hawaii. Nine seconds, please. Thank you. Under Greg McNuckin. We go to Florida to face the Gators. And all the talk is about Tebow, Tebow, Tebow. Then we're on the field and I stand next to Tebow Bridget. Like, dude's a freak. He's the, I mean, he's well put together. And then you see the backup quarterback, who's now starting for the Carolina Panthers. Was Cam Newton was the backup quarterback to Tim Tebow. And then you turn around and you see Aaron Hernandez. Wow. Oliver is put together like an Aaron Hernandez type guy. Yeah, and Hernandez smaller than yeah. Gronkowski by the better route runner and a better athlete. So on third and long, pressure, 
Zeno Joy! No, no, no. no. Podelo. Podelo, and again, you can't block him. And we talked to RJ Hollis on the game day crew. He couldn't block him. I'm not sure any Rainbow Warrior lineman wants to block 96. Watch this. Watch him use his hands and get skinny and run that circle. Great hips, Daniel great Sane speed. Has taken their third and final charge time out of the half. Now he may have Please taken. Reset the game clock to five seconds. Five seconds. He may have taken Bryce Crawford out of field goal range. Bryce Crawford is four of five this season. Has a long of six. I mean, 31 yards on. Where the ball is marked right now at the 32 yard line it'd be what 49 yard but the last time Bryce Crawford missed a kick inside of the 50 yards Robert was 2016 wow. now he's about 50 percent over 50 yards but this guy's a legit Lou Groza award kicker he punts he kicks off he does it all and he's in the top 50 in so many different categories with his leg power leg strength Made a 24 yarder earlier in this game. We're going to mark it at the 39. This will be a 49 yard attempt. His long this season is 31 yards. 24 in a row inside of 50. So it's up. It hits the crossbar. That's a win for Hawaii on this series. That is the end of the first half. You know how hard you couldn't throw the ball for 10 yards and accurately, consistently hit the crossbar. There's pressure by Jelani Tavai. That guy does not ever stop. His motor's always running, making big special teams play. And I think Crawford felt it. That's how big that play by Kaimana Podello was defensively for UH. Robert, total yards, San Jose State 281, Hawaii 161. And again, love dominating the quarterback play. And love numbers right now, 13 of 23, 273 yards. McDonald, 12 of 22, 105 yards. At halftime, Spartans lead the Rainbow Warriors 17 to 10. Stick around. Halftime show from our Spectrum Studios in Mililani is coming up. Here's our halftime statistics brought to you part by McDonald's of Hawaii. Well, there are things that stand out, Robert. For instance, Hawaii only 105 yards passing, where San Jose State is thrown for 273. And if you look at rushing yards, San Jose State's going to have to run the ball better in the second half. But I'll tell you, this is a good football game, and I can't wait for the second half. And third down conversions, four of nine for the Spartans, just two of nine for the University of Hawaii. What's on tap at halftime for both teams brought to you by Coors Light? Well, when you think about Hawaii, they're seeing what San Jose is doing defensively. They are rushing three, they're spying Cole McDonald, and they're dropping seven. They're going to have to get the passing game together. And if not, maybe we'll see some Dayton Faruta. Uh, there's going to be a running game that has to get going in the second half. The offense for Hawaii has yet to find what we look for when it's a well-oiled machine, that's some kind of a rhythm. Rhythm An offense, execution. Yes, when they start moving and marching up and down the field. Hawaii will kick off to start the second half, and the Spartans again lead 17 to 10. And the kickoff is to the right side. At the end zone, it's brought out from the one-yard line. Excellent coverage by the University of Hawaii around the six, seven-yard line. And give credit to the kicker. That was placed perfectly in the corner of the end zone. In the first half, you got to have a lot of love for Josh, the quarterback for the Spartans. Yeah, and you got to see the speedster on the reverse and then looking downfield. Great platform, great throw. The big time wide receiver, number 84. And then there's just a bullet right there on the quick slant. Love doing his job on the RPO as well. And Hawaii has to get better in cover three because they're allowing the vertical passing game to be successful. Tight end Josh Oliver making big plays. 84 Bailey Gaither made big plays, but was carted off the field. On first down here, they run an inside, basically a reverse. They do an offense. Yeah, a little fly sweep, and all the quarterback does is touch pass it. 
to 22, and we've seen 22 successful as well in this offense with a much larger role now that Gator has gone, gone, gone down. I'm trying to comb the sideline here, looking for 84. Not yet seen his jersey. A pickup of five on first down. Warren second and five in the 13 yard line. They give up the gut. Jelani to five there defensively. Talking to some of the scouts, they love Jelani to five. They're here to see Josh Love as well. They're here to see the big tight end. But Jelani to five, they feel can play in the three four package, which approximately 20 out of the 32 teams in the NFL are playing. Jelani to five, special teams. Outside linebacker, he's played inside. A guy that can just do it all. He did it there on second down, and on third and two, they give it again up the gut, and it's going to be short by about a yard. If Hawaii defensively can force his part to go three now, which they have, San Jose State now forced the punt. Yeah, and give Hawaii's kickoff coverage credit because that ball how it was placed and that's an art in itself for the kicker to be able to pin the ball inside the hash by the sidelines has given Hawaii great field position. I mean, it was textbook right cuff and corner for Hawaii specialty. Bryce Crawford it's another line drive punt effort and again I'm Gaffa tried to reverse field had he gone straight down the sidelines it was wide open. Robert, I like the fact that you have the vision, because I agree with you. He cut it back to the coverage. He already had contained broken. He should have taken that ball down the sidelines. Well, it comes down to the field offensively. It's Fred Holly in the backfield. To the left side is Marcus Armstrong Brown. And to the far side, trip receiver Jojo Ward, Cedric Bird, John Ursua. Hawaii Trail 17-10. Their first offensive possession of the second half starts at their own 45 yard line. Barton show blitzed and back off. Cole McDonald taking a while. And finally takes a snap. In and out of the man. So Fred Holly and they completed across the 40 yard line. To Cedric Bird. Yeah, and you're going to see what Craig Stutzman's talking about the RPO in terms of pushing the ball downfield to the number two receiver, and that's called a dig route. You go down about 14 to 16 yards, and then you go in. Great throw, great concept of pushing the RPO downfield. And you often hear quarterback coaches and offensive coordinators talk about different levels. You had John Ursua, the short level, same exact route, the dig, and on the back end of the second level was Cedric Bird. Come down a quick pitch to Jojo Ward. Keeps it balanced, reverses field fumbles, and he goes out of bounds. Possession remains Hawaii's. And that's the nose tackle. That's all the way to the sidelines making that play. At the 38 yard line, the second down, Hawaii. Hey, if the boogeyman can go boogie nights, you got to make plays. It, upfield pressure. You don't even see him on the screen anymore, but you're going to see him come into the screen running laterally and running like a fullback. That was the first time a San Jose State defensive player has scored a touchdown since 2008 that played on the offensive side of the ball. And you know he's jacked up. His first touch. That's huge. Goes into the end zone. A gain of two yards. They get to Holly right side. On second and eight from the 38, he may have gotten two yards to set up three and six for the Rainbow Warriors. Timeout. Injured player on the field. It's Jamal Scott, the outside linebacker. He's slowly getting up. He's going to have to miss the play because the training staff came on the field. They're addressing his right hand, right wrist, that area. Scott 6'2", 237, seven and always around the football. He's their Jelani Tavai, their leading tackler. So as the training staff attends to him, Hawaii coaches tend to the offense to see if they can get a spark on this series. The good pass completion to Cedric Bird by Cole McDonald on this series. The most to push the ball downfield. 
And that dude's number one jersey. I mean, pretty quiet tonight. Humbled. Voted into the San Jose State Hall of Sports Hall of Fame. Ceremony was last night. And you look at all the names. Jeff Garcia. Bill Walsh. Your Jack Elway. But who's your favorite? The favorite most notable name in the San Jose State Sports Hall of Fame. Pop Warner. That's a it's it's tough to get much. Bill Walsh is the genius. All the Super Bowl titles, the San Francisco, but Pop Warner. Yeah, and there's been kind of a coaching tree, a confluence of great coaches, John Ralston, Bill Walsh. I mean, there's been a lot of great coaches that have been here throughout the years and great football players. Dick Vermeil. How did I forget that? Greg McMahon. Under Jack Elway. Jack Elway, there you go. Third and six from the 36-yard line. 11-31. Left in the third quarter here. Cole McDonald keeps it, fakes to give to Fred Holly. Over the last game and a half here. Cole McDonald has not shown the ability to run like we've seen over the last year and a half. Whether it's spring camp, whether it's fall camp, even when he got into the games last year. He could turn the corner and he's gone. I think his best running game was Colorado State, and that's where we saw the quarterback counter, and that was a quarterback counter, but again, according, according to Craig Stetsman, when you have a quarterback that's that good, you run, him, you run him when you want to move the chains. You running him on scoring plays. That was an important down, and they're gonna run the quarterback counter, but give Derek Odom's defense a lot of credit. Hawaii, two for 10 now on third down. And they're gonna go for it in fourth down. Fourth and six. From the 36-yard line, no surprise, Nick Rolovich. He's not afraid to go for it on fourth down. Paul McDonald rolls to the right side. Has a man wide open. Doesn't throw it. Keeps it. And that's the Cole McDonald. We've seen tuck and run so very well. Derek Odom's going to be upset because there's an outside rusher that's responsible for contain. And once Cole McDonald breaks contain, you're going to see. Now, to his right, he's very dangerous throwing and running. And you're going to see him tuck that ball away and then wisely get out of bounds after picking up a huge fourth down. And as happy the team will be that he used his legs to get a first down when they watched the film, he had a touchdown pass that he didn't pull the trigger. But he got the first down, first and 10. 19-yard line. Cole McDonald across the middle of the field. Inside the five-yard line. And a big hit taken by John Ursua. Ursua, you mentioned, gets into the end zone. A volume type of receiver. I don't think anyone can cover this young man one-on-one. -on -one. And you'll see, again, separation on the slant. He understands how to push up field and then break it off. Depending upon the leverage of the defensive back, he's going to flatten his route off. In, in today's college football, take a forearm shiver to the helmet. Does that not require a flag? First and goal, three-yard line, speed up. Go McDonald outside to Fred Holly, and then knocked out of bounds at the three-yard line. So I asked Craig Stutzman, if they read the overhang, the count, and it's too heavy left, can you speed option to the right? And he said yes. That time it looked like there were more blue jerseys, one for the quarterback, you see 53 with a great base, and then 27 coming inside out along with number 31. Great defense, and that's a play Hawaii goes to a lot in the red zone. Uh, Jonathan Leonard, Ethan Aguayo, both there defensively for the Spartans. Second and goal, three-yard line, 9-18 left. Here in the third quarter. Go McDonald. Back in the end zone. Touchdown. John Ursua. And I don't know, Robert, if we're going to get a chance to see this, but Ursua with a little outside fake because they run the double out, and that's a staple of the run and shoot. The Z go, and then he snakes it back inside. That is tough to cover because you want to stay inside leverage. Watch number five. You're going to see him with a little outside head and shoulder fake right there. That's all it takes. And he got a defender to completely bite. Right, Metzger, at the point. It is up. It is good. The numbers are crazy. Cole McDonald, that's touchdown pass number 21 this season. And for John Ursua, oh, he missed the extra point. John Ursua, that's touchdown reception number 10. 17-16, Spartans. 
you're going to see a staple in the run and shoot. And then this is what Hawaii does to confuse the defenders. Normally, the number two receiver, and that is number Cedric Bird, number six. And then number three, John Ursua, is the number three receiver from outside in. They both normally go five yards and they run out. And San Jose has seen this a hundred times. Derek Odom, the defensive coordinator, has seen it a thousand times. But John Ursua fakes out. That's all you need. The inside linebacker is not in any position to make that play. I give Craig Stutzman, Nick Rolovich, a lot of credit because they know what the opponent is scouting them for, and they do a little change up. So Mescal again to the right corner with the kickoff. San Jose State brings it out across the 20-yard line. A spin move across the 40 to midfield. Will he not stay in bounds? What a great answer to Hawaii getting a touchdown. Spartans answer on special teams. Then I talked to Michael Gobrio last week. Kickoff coverage was a concern with missed tackles. We are so used to seeing Hawaii with a whole bunch of walk-ons covering kicks and being aggressive. That's a missed tackle right in the hole. That's one, that's two, that's three. And then finally, 41, Cheyenne Sonny Tord knocks him out of bounds. I'm still speechless that Ryan Mescal missed the extra point. It would have been 17-17. I, I made the mistake of taking it for granted that it was good. And the reason why is he's been 100% yes. on PATs, 100% on field goals. That's the first miss. So the kickoff return by San Jose State gives him the ball first and 10 of the 27. And why not? Josh Love showing more love for his favorite target in Josh Oliver. H naked boot. The H comes from the other side of the formation, all the way in the flat. The quarterback boots naked, and then he has a layered route, wisely throwing to the second layer as the third layer clears out. Josh Love, the big target, about 14, 16, 18 yards downfield. So inside the 15-yard line, Love fakes the give, throws deep down the field. Great defensive effort. Ro Farris, again, talk about Nick Nelson, Trayvon Henderson, some of the great guys that Abraham Elamimim has coached, has recruited. This guy, Ro Farris, is Hawaii's best corner. So Trey Hartley, intended receiver, and Ro Farris in perfect position, made a great play. Yeah, and Robert, you remember in years in the past, Hawaii's corners were 5'7", 5 5'8", 5 5'9", 5 this 6'2", now. And all they were guilty of back in the day was being 5'8". Excellent position. Good players, Josh Love looking for the end zone, and again, defended well by Hawaii. Well, that's the free safety. Kalen Hicks doing a nice job of, again, six foot three, understanding when you're in phase, which means you have the coverage, getting your head and eyes back to the football. And you saw him put the left arm out to gig, to feel. Yep. And when the left arm made contact, the whole body turned around to look for the ball. I've often heard you say, if you don't turn the head and find the ball, they're going to throw a flag every single time. Third and pick, 14 yard line. Josh Love, looking down the middle of the field, looking for the big tight end. And he's got it. Big time throw, big time catch. Not bad coverage. I mean, they go tight end for tight end, and they go deep down into the end zone. Watch this throw, great catch. And the thing about Ro Ferris is he's expecting free safety help. He has outside leverage, free safety bit on the underneath route. So the extra point here by Crawford is up and good. And now the lead is eight points at 24 to 16 with 6.20 left here in the third quarter on homecoming for San Jose State. UH Athletics reaches out to you online each week with updated promotions through its H-Mail e-newsletter. How to register, visit hawaiiathletics.com, click on the H-Mail button. It's simple, it's free, and San Jose State's not joshing. Josh Love, Josh Oliver. Yeah. Love now 15 for 27 for 300 yards. Rob, this is only the second time he's had over 300 yards, and there's still eight minutes and 20 seconds in the third quarter. And you're right, 
one Josh to the other. Josh Oliver, six catches, 139 yards. Wow. These guys are just dialing it up. And it's all set up by the Tyco Trail kickoff return. Putting San Jose State excellent field position after a touchdown scored by Hawaii and Austin. Now, Ongafla across the 10 yard line. His return to the 20, fighting for the sideline, extra yards, then knocked out of bounds. <laughs> Hawaii will take over at the 25 yard line. Did he get to the 25? What a response. Hawaii gets a touchdown, missed the PAT. It's 17 60. Spartans get a great kickoff return. And Hawaii makes two great defensive plays on first and second down. But what did you and I talk about in the pregame? How it always comes down to the end. The series is 20 19 and 1. These are evenly matched teams. And over the years, there have been some thrillers. Fred Holly with the carry. After 12 carries, 114 yards a week ago, we've not seen Dayton Fruit at running back. We have seen Fred Holly. Yeah, and I was at practice, Robert. And Wednesday. Elijah Hill. Yeah, we've seen a lot of those guys. And he, Dayton Faruta came up to Nick Rolovich and asked to go get treatment. So there's some type of small injury that he's dealing with. The Cole McDonald, right side. Has a sewer open. Under through he had to reach back and try and get it. Yeah, good call. It was an underthrow. But give credit to the defensive backs because when you're beat, you play the hands and the eyes and watch them take the ball out of John Ursua's hands. Both of those guys going for the ball, not the big hit. Second time in his game. That Jonathan Leonard. Jonathan Leonard caused the ball to hit the turf here. You know, Robert, we talk about pass rushers going for the football instead of the big hit defensive backs have to do the same things because if they lead with their head it's a penalty go for the football it's a new game the John Toussaint was initially Johnny on the spot but it was Johnny on the spot Jonathan Leonard that knocked it free come McDonald, big time complete to the sewer across midfield what a U-turn and down the way sideline wow or is a guy that at five foot nine inches tall, coming off knee surgery, how fast is he? He's got football speed. There's nobody really catching him on this. You're going to see acceleration, just a simple inside 12 yard speed breakout, and then watch him put on the Jets right here. I mean, he made a U turn, got away from two defenders, then got himself an escort with Cedric Bird. Yeah, and one thing sprinting coaches will always tell you if you want to stay in bounds, look straight ahead. Do not look back. I thought he stepped out of bounds well before where they're marking it here. But I'm not going to say a word. It's a 35 yard line where the offense takes over. Coleman Donald has time. He had a receiver wide open, overthrew Ursula, and for only the second time this season, Coleman Donald is intercepted. Robert, not only did he get intercepted, what do they teach defenses? Block the quarterback. He ended up on the ground. Was that a boogie night? Yeah, and, and he, he paid for that physically. So Boogie Roberts put McDonald on the turf and beating the double team, splitting the scene. And Jonathan Leonard is the guy making the pick. Cole McDonald had the short receiver open, went for the long receiver and grossly underthrew it. Yeah, not a good football decision, not a good throw. And look who's trying to calm him down. It's the captain in offense, J.R. Hensley. Yeah, Hensley only a junior, but he is the captain and the leader of that offensive line. First and 10, 24-yard line. Good trail, open near midfield, pulls it in. And that's a corner post. He set the defensive back to his leverage, which was outside, and then runs to the post. That's a double move. Really a nice catch on the horizontal extension and then showing the referee. It's a first down. Cottrell makes another big chunk play.
back to back. Love. You, you think Oliver's trying to impress some of the NFL scouts? Yeah, you're talking about general managers, wow. area scouts. Uh, there's a whole bunch of guys there, and you can see extension. And some of them think he does not have the afterburners, the big time speed. But I'm telling you, he's not only sneaky fast, he's got great hands. So Josh Love this time giving it to Holy Roberson. You don't need to have the burner speed if you make catches like that and if you're wide open. Yeah, and I agree with you in the comparison to Aaron Hernandez. Some guys are more receiver type tight ends. Yes. And then you got guys like Gronkowski that can block and get open. That's what this guy is. He can block the plane of attack and get open in the passing game. Third and one here. Mark at the 43 yard line. Malik Robo head on collision, but he did get the first down. It's Matautia and Okeke, their defensive. Look, Cottrell back in the game here offensively. Malik Robo in the backfield. Fake to him. And pressure! Kaimana Tadello. Wow. You're going to have to scheme this guy. And what I mean by that, you're going to have to chip the back. You're going to have to give this right tackle a lot of help because he barely touched number 96. And anybody that thinks that undersized guys cannot play, they can play at the National Football League level because guys cannot block a guy that has that kind of explosiveness, that type of power, and he's worked hard on his moves. I, I, gotta, I haven't yet heard an answer why. 96 didn't play last year. The loss of pain by Padilla. Again! He puts the pressure on Love, and he made Love get rid of him. Yeah, in the Colorado State game, who's the player of the game defensively? Kaimana Padilla. He's doing it all. I mean, when you look at the stats line, it's incredible. Watch him use his hands and then the hips and turn the corner. I mean, this guy is becoming legendary in this football game. Podello, Zeno Choi combined today. Excellent performances up front for Hawaii. And I think Bless Mentala is playing well as also. Ricky Longo, the defensive line coach, and Jacob Euro doing a nice job. Third and 20, pressure back side. Jelani Tavar, and in. And out of the tight end, whose last name is not Oliver. Billy Humphreys. Humphreys has to make that catch. He's open. Yes, and it goes right through his hands. It's the risk you take. You blitz 31, Jelani Tuvai, who among the linebacking core is probably most athletically capable of defending a tight end down the field. They gambled. San Jose State did not capitalize. Right, right, right. The punt here. Did he get it out of bounds? No, it went into the end zone. I thought it went out just before the final. 344. Left in the third quarter, and the Spartans lead the Rainbow Warriors 24 16. Welcome back. You see, the stands here a pretty good showing for the Hawaii faithful on the opposite side from where we're sitting. 344 left in the third quarter. San Jose State under homecoming leads the University of Hawaii 24 16. Good afternoon. I'm Robert Kikala. My broadcast partner is Rich Miyagi. And Robert, you remember in 2007, Warrior Nation, Hawaii would have a bigger crowd than a lot of their opponents, especially in the Mountain West Conference. It's starting to grow. They're seeing this team being the most successful team. Exciting to watch. They've got to somehow find a way to pull this game out. This is a really good football game. And you do not need the Uber app to jump on the bandwagon. Taking all coming. 344 left, third quarter. McDonald, wide open down the field. He almost threw a second pick in a row. He had a receiver who created separation, and that's Ursua again. Yeah, Ursua already has seven catches for 96 yards, but he is even, he is leaving, and this is grossly under throw. Cole McDonald has shown so much improvement in the deep ball, that was not a good throw. 
It was back to back. Bad passes by Cole McDonald, but he's built up a credit score that the coaching staff will allow him to make a few mistakes. Not a happy about it, don't get me wrong, but it's not a short leap. And again, McDonald, quick connection to Ursula again. You think Ursula is hurt? That Josh Oliver is getting all the catches in this game? I know he's competitive. I know he wants to be not only the leading receiver on his team, but the leading receiver in the game. And he also knows there's a lot of NFL scouts here, and they're watching him as well because he can leave after this football season, and he's a little bit older than your average three-year junior. So he took a, a mission after graduating California High School on the corner side of the big guy. And Cole McDonald gives it to Fred Holly. Fred Holly gets up the middle about four and a half, five yards. And everything Derek Odom does as the defensive coordinator is based on tendencies. And what are they doing on first down? Because that was not just typical three-man front. Those were linebackers that were blitzing, run blitzing, to stop this inside run game. And again, they're having success. With just three down linemen. There's three guys with their hand in the dirt, so to speak. Pick up a four yard, second and 16, 35. Holly, left side, across midfield, and it's finally brought down at the 46 yard line. Jonathan Leonard on the back end, that defense, is racking up some tackles tonight. You're going to see some double teaming on the nose, and then J.R. Hensley doing a nice job of taking the end inside, and that allowed Holly to get out the back door. Holly, 10 carries, 36 yards, only 3.6 yards a carry, but starting to become a little more productive in the second half. So from the 47 now, first and 10, two minutes left, third quarter. Hawaii trails 24-16. Cole McDonald trails a block and then turns the corner. Guess whose block he trailed? Number seven, Dayton Faruta was vicious on the perimeter. So Faruta into the game for the first time tonight. Against Duquesne, he was the bull in the China job. 12 carries, 114 yards. In the player of the game offensively for Hawaii, this guy became a legend last week. He seemed to have a fan base of hundreds. And on second and short here, it's less than a yard. It's for Ruta to the right side of Paul McDonald. McDonald sees something, tries to change it up. What he saw was, I need to give it to number seven. Now let me ask you, the Hawaii coaches can see us. We can see them. They may even be able to hear us. Do you think they heard us? We want more from Dayton Faruta? They're never going to admit it. <laughs> Brian Smith is here. I mean, they got a whole bunch of offensive coaches next to us. But you heard the crowd roar like when Faruta just started pounding it. 7.9 yards a carry. He gets the first down rather easily at second and one. McDonald has time. McDonald delivers. Caught. Ursua. I think UH wants to hurry. They'd like to get it to a two point. If not, go for two before the quarter ends. Pursue over the century mark. And more importantly, Dayton Faruta has entered the game. And on his first play, in a blocking situation, in a blocking situation, Faruta gets a big block, allows his quarterback to turn the corner. There are the coaches right there. There's four of them in the front row and four in the back row. I mean, they've got a lot of intelligence going on oh, yeah. listening to us. A McDonald across the middle of the field. Completed pass. JoJo Ward near the 10-yard line. And for all intents and purposes, it'll be the final play of the third quarter as the clock ticks inside five seconds now. Three, 24-16. The Spartans lead. The Rainbow Warriors the here on CEFCU Field inside this stadium. Brandon, this is University of Hawaii Football on Spectrum Sports. It's been a good college football game. San Jose State 24 16. Fourth quarter about to get started. It's an eight point game. If Hawaii gets into the end zone, 
and scores. What are the odds Nick Rolovich goes for two? About 100%. When you get to the fourth quarter, the chart will tell you to go for two. You don't know how many opportunities you'll have left. And Hawaii is knocking on that doorstep right now. It'll start first and ten. Officials mark it at the 12-yard line. Again, Hawaii trails 24-16. They drew first blood, led 3-0. A 15-play drive to open the game, the first possession of the opening kickoff. They've rallied six. They get to Furuta. No! Cole McDonald pulls it out and turns the corner left side. Great open field tackle by the free safety. He is responsible for the quarterback on the pull. Leonard has been everywhere. You're going to see him come inside out, control his feet. And these are the kind of drills that defensive back coaches consistently work on is the inside out tracking of the hip, not even allowing the runner to cut back across your face. A pickup of two yards. Second and eight. Ten yard line. Paul McDonald. Completed pass. He's chapter five. To Cedric Bird this time. It'll be close to the first down. It might be worth measuring. Yeah, and my problem with this is as you get closer and closer to the end zone, defensive backs have to tighten up. It's short. It's third and one. From the three. The big dog. Dayton Furuta. That's the first time I've seen the big dog get knocked back, but I think he does have the forward progress. They call it first down. It's first and goal. It's inside the three-yard line. Right at the two, is that. There's the wiggle we saw earlier with Ursula. There's you go big dog. There's speed option. And there's a fade in the corner. The JoJo Ward. Hey, it's hard to throw a fade when you're receiving for 5859. Five, it's hard. There's no question. Yeah. No, there's no question. Even those deep dig routes, yeah. it requires tremendous accuracy. They talk about the throwing, the catching radius of tall receivers. Cole has one tall receiver. Yeah. Mark Armstrong Brown. But if I'm San Jose State, anytime I get into the five, it's fade. When you go 6'5", 6'3", 6'3", 6'5". But I think if you're the offensive coordinator, it's Dayton for Wusta. Or look for Ursula to lose some defenders. And what penetration by San Jose State. And it's all the single-digit guys that you mentioned earlier. The seniors. Salosi Lato disrupted the backfield. Along with Boogie Roberts, as well as Bryson Bridges. And Jamal Scott doing a nice job of form tackling. Third and three. Third and goal from the three. 12.54 left in the game. Brent Brennan wants a timeout. Hawaii trails 24-16. Brennan does get the official's attention. And gets the timeout. The timeout will be 30 seconds. What do you do, Coach Miano? It's third and goal from the three-yard line, and you've got an offense that's highly successful this season in the red zone. There's a couple of things. First of all, on first down, I might have run Dayton Faruta because he's going to get positive yards, and you still have a couple of downs to run the ball. If not, I'm going with number five. That guy knows how to get open versus any coverage. But you see what you want about a description for a guy like John some receivers, you can say, oh, my God, he's so tall, he's so long. Other receivers, like, oh, my God, he's super fast. Some receivers, you say, he's quick. I think John Ursula is savvy. No, no question. It's really football smart. But I'll tell you, I'm going to have a third option because I need more options. Speed option. Yes, with the quarterback or some type of counter because he can run the football. Cole McDonald. Third and goal from three. McDonald has to root it to the left. Gets the block. Goes to the end zone. Touchdown. John Hersua. 
That was my second option, just so you know. I picked a lot of options. I wanted to be right. And you're always right going to John Ursua. And they're going to go for two. No question about it. The score changes now, 24-22. For, for John Ursua, 11 receiving touchdowns. Number one in the country. 12 overall touchdowns. Number one in the country. Cole McDonald starting to get hot, Robert. 21 for 35 for 222 yards. And here's a conversion. Cole McDonald looks left side, looks right side. Pressure. Will he keep it? He pushes oh. it forward. Under arm pass. Complete. Two point conversion. It's good. That is moxie. That is tough. Cole McDonald under duress. The shovel pass. Marcus Armstrong Brown. Wow. 12.45 left in the game. It is 24. 24 here in San Jose. And here's another look at it. 12.45 left in the game. And there's the two-point conversion. Cole McDonald. I mean, that's a heave. That's a shovel. And I love the way Ursua came back to the football. This is the fourth game John has had two touchdowns this season, but also that two-point conversion. McDonald now 21 for 35 for 225 yards and three touchdowns. Starting to look more like the Cole McDonald you and I both know. That's 23 touchdowns for the season. And here's a pooch kick. That's a gamble. That's a gutsy call, by the way. And the pooch is fair caught. Just short of the 35 yard line. They give up an extra 10 yards. Yeah, don't like it. The percentages from starting your drive at the 35 are much different than the 25. And you have some momentum. Have those kickoff coverage guys go cover the kick. First and 10 spark from their own 34 yard line. This game is tied at 24. Josh Lowe, play action. Pressure to the right side. Has Oliver open and then defended and a late flag thrown against the white defender, Zach Wilson. Then I think Zach had good coverage. Where's their contact? We may get a chance to see this on the replay. The free safety, Kalen Hicks, was there as well. Pass interference, number 20, defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot and automatic. It's a little early and he's down. on that upfield arm of the wide receiver and that's the one you take away but I think the contact is just I, I think it's a good call. Tic Tacs are breath freshener. Tiki Tac stinks. So the penalty pass interference against Zach Wilson. It's 15 yards. First and 10 now from the 49 yard line. And they give to Malik Roberson. It gets across the 45. Maybe got to the 43 yard line. It was short of a first down. A pickup of eight yards. Anytime you can run the outside zone and get eight yards on first down, it's success. Remember in our conversation with the coaches yesterday. And I think it may have been a defensive coordinator who said it. If we do something and we can stop you. We're going to keep doing it until you prove you can stop us. But I'm Channel J State. As much as Hawaii looks at Ursula, why not keep staring down the tunnel at your big tight end? Yeah, especially because your big play wide receiver is out of the game. He was the vertical threat, but you do have an NFL type tight end. That run play here. They've not marked it a first down. No, it's third and really short. The third. I thought for sure it was the first down. Why would you go look at that look? That's strong. Malik Roberson goes left side. Barely got it. Ikim Okek had a shot to make a stop and tackle for loss. And Corey Batoon thinking inside zone or tight zone really had the inside pressure that he wanted. Good job by the running back of bouncing it to the outside and again falling forward. 11-15 left in the game. Homecoming. Spartans 
This game is tied. 24-24. First and 10 from the 40. Josh Love taking down. 16 on the safety blitz. I just talked about Corey Batum. Dialing up blitzes, whether they're run or pass blitzes, he's bringing pressure. So Kalen Hicks gets into the backfield and got under a block as well. I'll tell you, that right tackle, Robert, is getting beat all day long, whether it's a defensive end or a blitzing safety. That's Dino Motes. He's a junior, 6'5", 275 pounds in Chandler, Arizona. Hawaii with three sacks, 29 yards of loss. The loss of seven, and Josh Love looking deep down the field. Is that caught? Wow! You talk about hand battling. The offensive receiver was battling with the defensive back. There was a lot of contact. Roe Ferris with good coverage. That's Trey Walker. Pulls it in, and Roe Ferris had great coverage. Roe Ferris needs to go up if he can, get off of one leg, and really become the wide receiver. It seems like now, was it a timeout called, or are they going to replay whether or not he caught that ball? Love with a career day, Robert. 340, came in with 347 yards all season. He has 371 today, 18 for 32. That's a catch, by the way. Looking at the replays, I mean, it's excellent coverage. Oh, it goes right through Roe Ferris's hands, and that's why they talk about don't be like a windshield wiper. Stick your hand up in the trajectory of the football. You got to credit Trey Walker. He makes a catch with a defender on his hip whose hands flashed in front of him before the ball dropped into his hands. Yeah, and we talked with Kevin McGiven about quarterback play, about how much will you install in After terms reviewing of your the offense. Play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The receiver has completed possession of the ball and be first down San Jose State. Is it clear now that San Jose State has settled on a number one quarterback? I, I think so. I, I, I can't see how you would pull this guy. He's throwing the ball with great trajectory. He's hanging in pockets. He's keeping his eyes downfield. He's sneaky athletic. And he's making some really good decisions. This is as much duress as I've seen the Hawaii secondary under all season. At the same time, up front, they're putting pressure on Josh Love. And he's standing up to it. It's first and goal from the four-yard line. 10-12. Remain the clock ticking wide open. Touchdown. San Jose State. Malik Roberson. And for Roberson, that's his first touchdown reception of the season. I mean, it was wide open. And you had, maybe it's not a pick play, but you had a little bit of interference taking out Pavihi, the linebacker, getting over the coverage. Good job of getting him out on the perimeter. Now Love is 19 for 33, 375 yards, three touchdowns. For the extra point kick, I'm going to watch it this time. It's up and good by Bryce Crawford with 10.07 left in the game. The Spartans have taken the lead 31-24. Hawaii tied the game at 24, and then San Jose State said, uh-uh. Great overthrow. That was the pass interference call. It was a, kind of a, like a ticky-tack call, but now you see the inside run game on first down, eight or nine yards. That's too much. Hawaii's defense has to stop the run because it sets up the pass. That was the first down. Now, Josh Love, watch. Hawaii coming with the sack. That's Kalen Hicks. And then here was the damage, the deep ball. It's been damaging all day. And then the touchdown. Really nice play calling by offensive coordinator Kevin McGiven. 393 yards total offense by San Jose State. There's the ensuing kickoff. He drives Angafa for five yards deep. And he thought about it a second, a third time, and you heard the crowd ooing and eyeing. Hawaii's offense back on the field. They've got 339 yards of total offense. Hawaii quarterback Josh McDonald, three touchdown passes. 
You and I, after meeting with the coaches yesterday, talked about a quiet sense of confidence, knowing that they played well and they lost to an FCS team, Davis. Then they faced a really athletic, blitzing Washington State defense where they really struggled offensively. But they thought they got their rhythm back against Oregon. Really good athletes, and they had the bye week. They are clicking offensively. Boy takes over first and 10, 25 yard line. 10 7 left in the game. And Fred Holly, he was a step away from stepping through a would be arm tackle until he was brought down. Yeah, you, you, you called it great, Robert, because right here, if he gets his knees up and he gets through that tackle of Latu, there's some daylight or maybe some evening type of sunset. Definitely no morning fog like we saw the other morning. You could not see the mountains behind the stadium. It's beautiful today. Great football weather. 9.30 left in the game. Pick up a five yard. Paul McDonald, middle of the field. For sure. Just short of the 45, but it is a first down. The thing I like about Ursua is the confidence, the swag. If he catches the football, he's looking to break tackles, and he's strong. He has strong legs, and he steps out of tackles. John Ursua is not done for the evening. No, it, it's tit for tat. Josh Love to Josh Oliver. Cole McDonald to John Ursua. Yeah, 132 yards, two and touchdowns, John Ursua. And where's Oliver at? 657 in 143 for Oliver. 143 for Oliver. Paul McDonald outside. Marcus Armstrong and Brown, extra effort. Gets in the first down. Is short of the 40 yard line. We're going to mark it at the 38. Do you get the feeling it's whoever has the ball yes. last? And then if you told me this was a score, if you told me these were the stats and who was playing, you wouldn't have to tell me who the opponent was. It's going to be San Jose State if you get this type of shootout, this close a game. And that was the China route. And all of the players and the coaches call Cole McDonald China. That is his nickname, and that's a good reason why he's reading the high-low defender. There's first and ten. He throws high for Armstrong Brown. Now, here's what we find out this week. There's a penalty flag. Is there a penalty flag? No, there's a player down, but I think he's okay. That's Marcus Armstrong Brown. So the conversation this week was, you see the kid, he looks California surfing. He's got dreadlocks. And then now all of a sudden, he's Filipino. I didn't see that coming. He's part Filipino. One eighth Filipino, and you're right. You talk about charisma, good looking, tall. He looks like something you'd script in Friday Night Lights or Saturday, any type of movie. He's a good looking kid. Okay, that pass completed, and again the effort by Marcus Armstrong Brown, and it's body slammed by John Toussaint. I like Armstrong Brown because he's bleeding yardage, he's falling forward, he's fighting for extra yards. He knows that once you tuck the ball away, continue to use your big body. Uh, he stepped out, did get the first down. It was like calf roping in a rodeo. And he got body slammed on the back end. It's first and 10 from the 31 yard line, 746 left. They get to Holly right side. Barely got back. Well, he did get a yard. Past the line of screen. Bryson Bridges, I mean, we can continue to talk about all three of these guys, but they get hand extension, they stay square, they shed the blocker. Really a nice job by that front three. We talked about them all game long. They're holding up. 719 and counting. Second and 10. 31 yard line. Hawaii trails 31 24. Paul McDonald has Fred Holly to his left side. He's looking right side. Throws, completes it. And what an effort! Jojo Ward! Makes the first would-be tackler miss. That's a more Ziegler, and then get the first down. Yeah, Ziegler's had a great game, but Cole McDonald's throwing this ball before the receiver even comes out of his break. First of all, the pre-snap, he's finding out what defensive back is the furthest off, and he's going to that receiver. He's spreading the football around. I don't know if it's in the dictionary, 
but he's putting some boom on the balls he's throwing. Yeah, he's ripping it. He, he's, he's got a great platform, and talk to Craig Stutzman, he has great arm strength. Another first down on this drive. First and 10, 19 yard left. Cole McDonald, right side, completed. JoJo Ward just short of the sticks. Right at the 10 yard line, needed the nine. As Hawaii gets further and further in the red zone, those defensive backs have to play press. They have to bump and run. They cannot let Hawaii just throw and catch. Hawaii now with 400 yards of offense close to it, San Jose State, 393. You talk about a game that's even. There's an injured player on the field, just off the field. It's the cornerback, John Toussaint. He's being attended to by one of the trainers for San Jose State. And, and do now you attack the guy that's coming in? Because yes. that's a very good defensive back going out of the football game. And you see the two receivers right side are Bird and Ursua. Second and one from the 10-yard line. The quarterback teacher Cole McDonald takes the give. <laughs> He faked it to Fred Holly. They call McDonald who tried to reverse field himself. Some David Copperfield because you didn't know who had the ball. It was almost like the mesh just continued to move. And here's the big guy. I just flashed back to the regular Mountain era and the West Philly people. That big boy just was boogie. 31, 10 yard line. 524 left in the game. Hawaii trails. Hawaii's got a first down. And look, that's a big dog. He wants to eat Dayton Ferruta inside the five yard line. He is hungry, but he did get help from some of those guys, that offensive line. But Robert, he's not Nate Alau because Nate was smaller. He's not Reagan Mauia. He's not West Kali Kipi. He's Dayton Ferruta, and that is a handful. He's a bulldozer. Hey, you know what? When Reagan did it, he started at 365. Big boy. And then in a year, drops to 260, gets drafted. But in Miami Dolphins. There's a place for guys like that. First and goal, four yard run, 451 in counting, 31 24. San Jose State leads in their homecoming game. And play action in and out of the hands of Ursua, defended well by Trey Webb. And they're saying that's a tip ball because the defender was draped on the wide receiver. See if this ball gets tipped at the line of scrimmage. Right there, yes. you can see the change of direct, uh, trajectory. Robert, 12th play of this drive. Coming up. It's a great college football. It, it is fantastic. Second and goal, four yard line. Does Nick Rolovich have a trick up his sleeve? On the road, in comfort, against the Spartans. Cole McDonald has room, rolling left side. He shovels it forward, touchdown, Hawaii! Ursula. Unbelievable, because that's John Ursua's third touchdown catch. But Cole McDonald, has all kinds of platforms. This is a shovel pass. Watch him. Okay. I've seen great plays in football. Cole McDonald's starting to improvise. Ursua, watch him get leverage, and then it's a scramble drill. He's coming back to his quarterback. And he sets it up to give his quarterback a target. Ryan Mesco, the extra point. It is up. It is good. And this game is tied. 31-31. 434 remaining. This is University of Hawaii football on Spectrum Sports. 12 plays, 75 yards, 5 minutes, 33 seconds, and the numbers do not lie right now. Yeah, and these are Hawaii's two biggest stars. McDonald now 28 for 44, 289 yards and four touchdowns, and John Ursua, 136 yards, three touchdowns, Robert, and total combined yards for both of those guys is ridiculous right now and again you're all invited to stick around for a post game show from my spectrum studios in Mililani Rob DeMello RJ Hollis Nate Ilawa and Kavika Helms it's tied at 31 
4.34 left in the game. Robert, both teams combined for 807 yards of offense. Boy, look, with a short kickoff again, high and wide, fair caught around the 16-yard line, so they'll get it at the 25. Cole McDonald now has 24 touchdown passes this season, two interceptions. John Ursua now has 12 touchdown receptions, 13 overall. They're going to both be leading the nation again. Yes. After six games, Robert, and the thing about it is when you talk about touchdown to interception ratio, people talk about three to one. It's 12 to one. 24 touchdowns, only two interceptions, and nobody can cover John Osuna. Can anybody cover Josh Sullivan with 434 left in the game? Barnes take over, first and 10, 25 yard run. Josh Love looking right up. Josh Love looking for guess who? Josh Oliver. He ain't joshing. And Oliver comes up, hobbled. Good job on the corner route. Good job of staying in the pocket. Good protection, solid pocket. And just a strike in his three white jerseys. They, they may need four to cover Josh Oliver. I like what Ika Mokeke tried to do. He had Zach Wilson who cut his legs from under him. So, Okay, he went for the ball. I like that. Oliver now eight catches, 158 yards. First and 10, 48 yard run, or 40 yard run, check that. And they go right side. Manigo. And not Malik Roberson. That's almost like a speed option with the toss. Nice job of getting to the perimeter and outrunning the Hawaii defense. Another first down for the Spartans. 346 left in the game. They run it again. This time, Monigo bounces right side. May have gotten three yards. Kendall Hume coming into this game, Robert, the second leading tackler amongst the defensive linemen. I've seen him with great athleticism, spin moves. He's making plays in there. And there's a lot of time for San Jose State. Josh Lark completes right side. And making the catch is Humphreys. Yeah, and Hawaii doesn't have really an alpha on that defensive line, but they alternate those guys like a hockey team. They're constantly keeping those guys fresh, and this is a long football game that's coming down to the last play possibly. It's 32 on the Hawaii 38 yard line. It's 254 left in the game. It's tied at 31. Barnes, high snap, Josh Love, almost tripped up, survives it, keeps his balance, and gets a first down. Yeah, and that's great athleticism. You've mentioned high snap three or four times during this broadcast. That was up there. I, I'm not sure what Josh Love's vertical jump is, but he had to go reach up and get that football, which delays the timing of the inside zone. That previous play, the catch by Humphrey, was it a catch? Give credit to Josh Love. He was dead to right. Tackle for a loss of yards. Steps out of it. Keeps his balance. Gets the first down. Gets pressure from the outside. They get him! It was Jelani Tavai putting pressure. It was Hamano Podello putting pressure. And then Hugh closed the door. Yeah, and really give all of those guys credit because they collapsed the pocket. They were responsible. You're going to see a good inside rush. But Padello just gets his hands inside, speed to power, and just drives a tackle that's outweighs him by 50 pounds back into the quarterback. You don't expect the power rush by Padello. You often expect the foot speed, the get off, to get out, get under. He went straight power to get to Josh Love. And Love again completes the pass, and he was down. Knee touched the ground. It was caught, but they're going to mark it here at the 37-yard line. And Robert, as this clock continues to tick down, his knee was definitely on the ground. But then it comes field goal time, and it's a chess match to call your timeout and use your timeouts wisely. So it's third and 12. Spartans at the 37-yard line. Right now, it sets up to be a 54-yard field goal. 
right before halftime, Rush Crawford can hit the crossbar from 49. So they've got to get some positive yardage to get in better field goal range. And the wind is blowing. It's blowing left to right. It's a chilly night. It's not cold. It's chilly. It feels great, by the way. Great weather in San Jose. Robert, prior to that missed kick, Bryce Crawford had made 24 consecutive field goals inside a 50 yard. That was 49 yard. He hit the crossbar. And he this legit. Come, could come down to He's legit. He does it all. A minute 19 left in the game. Again, 30 12, 37 yard line. The score is tied at 31. Josh Love gets pressure, gets it off, and goes deep down the field. I don't think he caught it. I don't know. The thing that you have to be impressed with is Love standing in the pocket, taking a beating all game long, and throwing this ball that's just barely outside. Really a nice throw. They just ran out of real estate. And he gets pushed out of bounds as soon as he gets the paw on it. And give Manu Hudson Rasmussen a lot of credit because he was pressing out. He was using the sideline. And he's given up six and a half, seven inches. Easy and probably about 70 pounds. Bryce Crawford back to punt. He's going to receive the snap around the 50 yard line. This is fake territory. Yes. I know Hawaii is aware of that they probably have their defense staying on the field. They have to be ready for it. They have to be aware of it. There's a flag down. Did Hawaii come out with 12 guys on the field? And, and that could change, right? Whether you kick a field goal or you go for the foot down. They, they pick, picked up they the flag. Love doing a nice job of going up and getting the football, but that right foot taps on the white. So Crawford now back on the white 45 to receive the snap. An end over end effort goes into the end zone. Hawaii will get the ball. And they're going to have to march. They're going to have to move down the field. They do have a couple of timeouts left. And that's a mistake, right? You are supposed to sky punt that ball and make the returner make a decision on the 10 yard line. When the ball goes into the end zone, that's a loss of 10 yards. That's hidden yardage. Hawaii now starting the drive on the 20 instead of the 10. Huge break for Hawaii. And we're going to have a, a check of the timeout situation. The scoreboard saying Hawaii has two, and San Jose also has two. So each team with two timeouts remain. The minute seven left in the game. It's 31 31. It'll be first and 10. Hawaii will take over from the 20 yard line. Cole McDonald. That's quarterback. He scored four touchdown passes in this game. To bring Hawaii back on first down. His completion to the outside, left side, Marcus Armstrong Brown did not get out of bounds. The clock continues to tick away. 55 and counting. And I'm pressing Marcus Armstrong Brown because he's not a burner. You got to get up there and play him or else Hawaii will take the eight or nine yards. The pickup of eight yards there. Paul McDonald looks to the opposite side. Jojo Ward gets out of bounds. First down, Hawaii. 42 seconds left on the clock. That's a big time throw and catch. McDonald now, fifth game with 300 yards. The outside receiver, Jojo Ward, speed break out, ball thrown before he breaks. That's timing. Hawaii cannot get over inches. It, it, it's a coaching cliche, but they're going to have to take what the defense gives them. If the corners back off 10, 15 yards, take the 8, 9 yard out, get out of bounds. Yeah, and San Jose playing quarters defense, and that's what will happen. If they don't press the outside guys, you'll have that speed break. First and 10, 36 yard run. Cole McDonald, pressing him back. He cannot take a sack. He does get sacked. Hawaii's going to have to use a timeout. Yeah, big number 92 doing a good job of holding on to cloth. Kate Hall getting to Cole McDonald. Hawaii now uses one of their two remaining timeouts. 34 seconds left. And they lost a good chunk of yards. 
It was first and 10 from the 36 yard line. With the sack, it's backed up four yards. It'll be now three yards they're going to give it officially. It'll be second and 13, backed up to the 33 yard line. 34 seconds. Clock stops when you get a first down in college football. One timeout. And obviously, we're hoping for good things for this Hawaii Rainbow Warrior team, Robert. But there's nothing more exciting than college football overtime. So Ryan Mescal this season, coming into this game, was four for four with a long of 35 yards. McDonald has to root to the block to the middle of the field, completed to Ursua near the 45-yard line, about a yard short of the first down, and the clock is still ticking on third and one. San Jose State now three deep, four underneath. It's kind of a prevent. Let them catch the ball underneath as the clock continues to tick. And they put pressure, jump offside in San Jose State. Home McDonald got outside the tackle box. He did out of bounds, but it looks like San Jose State jumped. And as good as the Spartans are up front, you got to give credit to Hawaii's offensive front. Not only have they handled the physicality, handled the pressure, no penalty flags again. So it's officially offside. The only penalty flag I, I can remember against the offensive line was Ill Manning, illegal receiver downfield. Yeah, but Robert. I also want to give credit to the back seven of San Jose State because they've done a nice job. The linebackers tackle well, the Jonathan defense backs Leonard. cover well. So it becomes first down, but there's only nine seconds left. Hawaii needs a completion and a quick timeout. And you're going to get a three deep coverage, Robert, four people underneath. They can afford to go in the middle of the field one time and then call timeout. They got to get out of bounds. Well, they have one timeout left. Ascent, ostensibly, there's two plays left in this football game yes. for Hoy. And you figure a long of 35. That's it this season by Ryan Mesco. We've seen him in practice. Hit 45 to 50. He's capable. They put another second back in the game clock. It's now 10 seconds. But you'd like to think they need 12 to 15 yards and then get their time out. Paul McDonald has time. Paul McDonald has got to get rid of it before the clock hits zero. He can't take a set. And he fumbled. Zero. We're going to overtime in San Jose. What a game. <laughs> I just love College football overtime, and you know what? Cole knew he had this one play left, Robert, and he was trying to go for it all. I mean, it's lucky for Hawaii time right now. He fumbles it there. It's dangerous territory. The clock did strike zero. This game is tied at 31. And the Rainbow Warriors on the road in San Jose is headed into overtime. Kate Hall, now that's two huge on this plays in this series. You can see the game clock on the left ticking down. The ball is out. It is picked up. But I think it, the clock did expire before Kate Hall and the crew was tackled. It's been fun. There's been drama. Yeah, and there's been offense, right? Love 22 for 37 for 400 yards and three touchdowns. McDonald 31 for 47, 317 and four touchdowns. Combined 717 yards. So overall, homecoming, San Jose State, 47, 32 and two. All time, homecoming for the Spartans versus Hawaii. Hawaii leads two to one. And don't get me started on the NFL overtime because I cannot stand it. It's hard to even understand and explain. College football overtime is legit. It keeps it exciting. And these stats count. It's yeah. amazing because at the end of the game, depending upon how long this goes in overtime, John Rasua, and Cole McDonald, Josh Love, going to have even better stats. And the fact that you cannot tie. I love it.
Yeah. There's already been too many ties in the National Football League. Yeah. There's no tying when you play a football game. Somebody has to be the big Again, you're all welcome, invited to join the post-game show after this game. It'll be live from our Spectrum Studios in Mililani. Captains are meeting at midfield. It looks like Hawaii called it the flip went in favor of the Spartans. You always defer. Whoever wins defers because you want to know what the opposing offense gets so you know what you need. But it'll take a whole special kind of someone to win the toss and take the ball. Okay, so what happens here in overtime is the first team goes on the field, they get the ball to the 25-yard line. You can make a first down, do what you got to do. Field goal, touchdown. If you turn it over, game over. Is that the way it sets up? Well, both teams will have an opportunity to score, 25. right? And that's why you defer, so you know what the opponent has, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown, you know what you need now. After two tries, then you have to go for two, which is a reason why you don't have a lot of ties. You don't have any ties in high school or college football. First team scores a touchdown, get an extra point. Second team scores a touchdown, go for two, come Again. up short, you lose. Mm -hmm. Go for two, you convert, game over. You kick the extra point, you go tit for ten, you play another overtime. And again, it's got to go two overtimes, and then you're forced to go for two points. Hawaii gets the ball first. They've got Faruta in the backfield. They start at the 25-yard line. And they give to Faruta. Left side. Gets tripped up. Picked up five yards. I think any second-level defender or third-level defender, linebackers or secondary, don't want it. Trip him up. Don't take him on. Like, he punishes you when he gets tripped up and it falls for the extra yard and lays a shoulder into a back-end defender. And you'll be spending all week in the Whirlpool. Yes. A pickup of four for Furuta. They give Furuta right side. Big dog. It's close. He it may have gotten to the 15-yard line. Robert, this is Hawaii's first overtime game since 2013. That was against San Diego State. Wow. They lost that one 28-21, hoping for better results. The only score in that game was Marcus Kemp. alley -oop. touchdown catch. So it's 31. He got just a yard short of the first down mark. They give it again for Ruth, the right side. And a collision first down. Faruta has vision. He, he's not just a converted linebacker. He played that obviously at Mililani High School, but he's come a long way with ball security. And he didn't have to go far to get physical. He understands that part of the game very well. First and 10, 14 yard line. This is the first possession of overtime in San Jose. Cole McDonald, looked right side. Receiver open. Caught, stepped out of bounds, about the five yard line. And there's only one way to cover that, is you gotta roll the corners up, play cover two, but you can't play cover two in the red zone. They're forced to play quarters. They have to get up and motor out, or backpedal out, or else you're gonna see this all evening. We've seen it all evening. So JoJo Ward successfully hauls it in. Ball's at the right hash mark. Wide side is to the left. Peruca at running back. It's second and one. A pickup of nine. The completion to JoJo Ward. And here on second and one, Peruca near the goal line gets to the one yard line. First and goal now for Hawaii. 
I, I like that in overtime, Hawaii chooses to get physical. Yeah, I, I love that too, and I love the fact that the offensive line is getting up to that second level, and they're playing with a lot of pride. The first and goal, it's at the one. Cole McDonald has Faruta to his right. Gives it to him. Touchdown! Dated Faruta. His first. And, and what Faruta does is make the whole team seem more physical. And it's inspiring. That young man, we didn't see him in the first half, but he's been a big part of the success offensively in the second half. You're going to see right now. Watch the double team on the nose. And then if you're a linebacker in the hole, you better punch up through there and take Faruta down by his legs. Faruta now nine carries, 26 yards and a touchdown. Let's remember now, earlier in this game, boy, you missed an extra hole. And over time, Ryan Mescal is up. It's good. Faruta touchdown. Ryan Mescal, PAT. Hawaii leads 38-31. Now, Here's a deal. It forces the Spartans to score a touchdown and a successful extra point, or the game's over. If Hawaii on defense gets a turnover, game over. Game over. And so give credit to Il Manning, J.R. Hensley, to Anga Tuilima, Solo Vaipulu, and Cole Laval. Those guys, I think they've got better as the game has gone on. And I'll tell you another thing, Robert. Hawaii's defensive line is really doing a better job at the end of the fourth quarter, and they were applying some serious pressure. We met with the coaches. McGiven, the offensive coordinator, a lot of respect for Corey Batum as a defensive coordinator. And they go kick for them. They fake the speed option, and they throw it over the top. Overthrown by Josh Love. Of course, this is four down territory because you got to get in the end zone. That's McGiven type. A thousand best plays. You fake the pitch to the running back, let him swing out the back door, and then try and over the top to the running back. Love the play design. Second and 10, 25 yard line. Brent Brennan in his second season as head coach. The snap here, pressure to Josh Law, and he delivers. Malik Roberson. And you talk about a great play design. Hawaii had two guys coming off the defensive left side. And the back sneaks out. Perfect offensive call versus that defense because the Hawaii is burning zones. Josh Love has been impressed. I, I am so impressed. This young man is tough, savvy, making good decisions. The stand and deliver the two defenders in his mouth. This time he gives it. Going right to left, turns the corner, Malik Roberson. They got Hawaii to bite on the misdirection and the pre snap motion and run the opposite direction. And what did I tell you about Kevin McGiven? The, the book on him is the thousand greatest plays on offense. He's going deep into the playbook. That's why it's exciting. Overtime. Roberson now 13 carries 48 yards. Remember at halftime, San Jose couldn't run the football. They are much more diversified in their attack. And they couldn't run in the first three games of the season. I mean, they're averaging about 60 yards per game on the ground, amongst the worst in the country. But Bradley Crawford, his extra point is good. Guess what? We're going to overtime number two here in San Jose. Hawaii marches, gets a Dayton Furuta touchdown. San Jose State responds, gets a Malik Roberson touchdown. It's 38-38. And Robert, the 2017 last week was honored by the University of Hawaii in the Circle of Honor. There was three, four, five games that came down, two of them oh, yeah. to overtime, three of them to the last possession. If you're going to be a good football team, you believe in one another, you win the close ones, and that's what this is all about. So 07 was overtime Louisiana Tech. I think San Jose, and I know Fresno. San Jose State overtime. Fresno was last possession. The Washington Nevada game. We're down 21-0 in the first Mouton. quarter. Brian Mouton's interception. Yeah. 
the good teams win the close games, and that's what it's going to take for this Hawaii team. Because even though San Jose State's 0 3, I felt they were a good football team, and they're showing it. And here's a wrinkle in overtime. In the second overtime, and each pursuing overtime, they swap who goes first. Good so point. Hawaii went first in the first overtime on offense. Spartans answered. And now the second overtime, San Jose State will start on offense. There's nothing I don't like about college football yes. overtime. I think they got it right. The NFL does not want to do that. Right side. Wide out. 89. They send Man Eagle in motion right side. They tried to confuse the defense by sending a man in motion, open Oliver right side, but they went left side. Excellent coverage in the back end by Hawaii. Yeah, Samuel Akuteo with good pressure, but Roe Farris with even better coverage. Second down. Second overtime. Two tight ends down. One at each back. They take the give in and out of the hands of Billy Humphrey. That's the second drop for 81. He's got to make that catch. As much as I want to think Dion Warwick and do you know the way to San Jose, you kind of want to think Billy don't be a hero. Catch the ball before you decide to run with it. And I flew here with the team, and you and I are flying back with them back to Hawaii. A win would be oh. a much better atmosphere. Yes. Third down. And 10, 25 yards long. Josh Lott has time. Excellent coverage, Jelani Tavai. Big play by Jelani Tavai showing that he can do it all. Rush the passer, tackle open field, cover guys, keep them underneath, come up and make the nice tackle. Now we're talking second overtime. And Jelani Tavai shows us another gear. Bryce Crawford now. This is huge. We're going to put it down the 32 yard line. This would be a 42 yard attempt. He's a legitimate college kicker. Excellent. He's got leg power. He missed earlier. Did he miss again? Yes, he did. He missed for him. What turns out to be a chippy. He is one of the top kickers, punters in the country. He never got all of it. No. Clearly. He hit it too low and there was no distance. It was just a high, short kick. You can see the hold. And then he pushed it to the right. That's it, it up here. Hawaii just needs a field goal. This game's over. But they cannot play not to lose. Yeah, but I still think you'll see some dates in Faruta because they've had success. Look at him. He's doing jumping jacks. Reminding back there. me of Joey Iosefa. Yeah. Against Navy. He comes back from a foot surgery and carries the ball 40 times. For McDonald. Gives right side for Ruta. Faruta cuts it back to the left. Gets inside the 20 yard line. Big time play. Uh, you get five, six yards on first down. You keep the ball in the middle of the field. I'm not saying they're setting up for a field goal because there's a long way to go in the football game, but you need to get five or six yards on first down. They get six yards by Faruta on first down. Faruta left side. Of Paul McDonald. They give it. They keep it to Paul McDonald. It took it out of the belly of Faruta. Yeah, and this. It's wide open on the right side. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think, uh, you know, the ball, you want a position in the middle of the field. The thing that people don't understand about college football, the hash marks are that much wider, so it becomes an angle kick. In the NFL, the ball is always in the middle of the field. I'm trying to think like how Nick Rolovich would think. And I'm thinking. If you keep feeding Faruta, that defense steps up. Now you take a shot to John Ursula. It's third and five at the 20-yard line. 
He sticks it in the belly of Faruka. He battles back toward the middle of the field. It sets up a Mescal field goal attempt. Let's see where they mark it. And for the viewers, it was a too high secondary, which means it's a six man front. That's the proper call, the give on the run. The ball's at the 18. When they snap, it'll be placed on the ground about the 26 yard line. A 36 yard field goal attempt by Ryan Mescal and Brent Brennan. He calls timeout. Iceman. He calls timeout. Interesting gamesmanship, Brent Brennan. We've seen Rolovich ice kickers before halftime, but this is the use your timeouts, ice the kicker. Also, set up defensively a potential block. And, and this is what you talked about where good teams you, you need to do a couple of things. Good teams win the games they're supposed to win, good teams win games at hard fought, you know, knock down, drag out brawls, and, and good teams have to come up with ways to win tight, closely contested games on the road in double overtime. Yeah, and a lot of teachable moments. They haven't played their best football, but again, it's all about the W. The ball will be put down at the 26-yard line. It'll be a 36-yard attempt for Ryan Metzger. The kick is up. He missed it. The pressures of college kickers. Look at the reaction by Brent Brennan. It's tough to tell from that angle. It took him a while to realize he missed it. Look at that vertical jump. He got some hang time. Brent Brennan went airborne. He's still young, former wide receiver, can get off the ground. Colt Brennan's cousin. Who got his coaching start as a graduate assistant in 1998 under Fred Van Oppen. And then he starts his second season as a graduate assistant at the University of Hawaii for about five hours. And the guy he was supposed to be assisting, he couldn't stand him. So he packed his bags <laughs> and he left. There was some inside pressure on yes. that. But the guy you're talking about was me. Yes. He was my GA. We went to Dukes. I'm trying to love him up because I think he's going to be a great coach. And he gets a better job. Washington, right? Yes, University of Washington. So he goes to the University of Washington. Along the way, he crossed paths with guys like Jose Amalu. Mark Banker. Mark Banker. And then we talked to the defensive coordinator, Derek Odom. Derek Odom, yeah. He's had. They coached together. Yeah, he tutored. His GAs were Abraham Elamidian, and at one time, Jacob Yorl. Six degrees of separation. Third overtime. Touchdown, you have to go for two. Home and down, pressure, right side. Did he cough it up? No, he sacked. He sacked. Aguayo, 31, and he's been making plays all game. We haven't called his name enough, but again, look at what they're doing up front. There's dogs, there's stunts. They're applying pressure. They're challenging Cole McDonald to throw the ball downfield. They've unleashed the dogs in overtime, and towards the end of the, the regulation, they put pressure. They got to Cole McDonald a few times. But it's two, three, four seconds. You got to get rid of the ball. The loss of six yards. Second and 16 backed up to the 31 yard line. Cole McDonald has time. Looks right side. Goes over the top. Overthrows. Intended receiver John Kersula. Is that the quarter defense you talked about? Played that's, well? That's exactly quarters. And the difference now, the corners are getting closer to the outside receivers, not allowing them to run the speed breakout. You're going to see your sewer do a nice job with his hands and then just vertically try to get a field, but he cannot quit on that route. He has to accelerate to the back of that end zone. Third and 16, 31 yard line. It's tied at 38. This is the third overtime here in San Jose. Cole McDonald. Delayed blitz. 
He stands and tries to deliver and throws it out the back of the end zone. And the delayed blitz forced him to get rid of the ball. There's nothing. Jamal Scott. Yeah, there's nothing scarier, Robert, than safeties having wide receivers, the inside guys, Bird and Ursua, challenge you vertically and then have a two-way go. But the pressure was applied. And now they're forced on fourth and 16 to attempt what would be a 49-yard field goal. This is Jose Amalu. So Mescal from 49 misses. He was perfect. He was perfect coming into this game. Two missed field goals and a missed extra point. And we're talking about following the season where Hawaii was one for four on field goal attempts. Yeah, and Noah Borden, the snapper, yeah. great snap, good hold. He had a distance. Yeah, he did. He has every, the leg. every kick he attempted tonight, Ryan Mescal had plenty of leg. And I'd be shocked now if you don't see San Jose State being conservative with inside runs because they have that much confidence in the kicker, although he's missed. Yes, twice. Both kickers here have missed twice on field goal attempts. One kicker has missed twice in overtime. Are you into numerology? Because I was number 38, and so was their kicker. <laughs> so here in first down, Josh Love has all the time in the world. He completes it short of the 10-yard line, but a first down. We talked about the similarities, the commonalities to Brent Brennan and Nick Rolovich. Throwing the ball on first down, maximum protection, two-man route, deep out, tough to cover. This young man with strawberries on his elbow has earned the respect of this this booth, and I'm sure no a lot of fans throughout that are watching this broadcast. But so Trey Walker pulls it in, and on first down here, Robinson. Malik Roberson is stopped after gaining maybe a yard. By Manu Hudson Rasmussen. One thing I was talking to Michael Gobriel, the special teams coach, is how they scheme up blocked field goals. And they've been successful. Jelani Tavai has blocked the field goal. It's not over, Robert. Second and 10. 12 yards left. Malik Robinson, right side. There's no chance it's being taken. They're running to the middle of the field. That's exactly where they're working their way for the ball to be back on the middle. They're going to put it in their field goal kicker's hands once again. So Bryce Crawford, there's 38. Stretching on the Spartan sideline. The third and nine. Hawaii with a lot of guys inside the box. Expecting run. And they do get run. Roberson again. Robinson. May have got back to the original line of scrimmage, which is a 13 yard line. You know, Crawford was three for three, Robert, against Oregon at Osden Stadium. He's kicked under pressure. He's a Luke Rosa, you know, nominee. This guy has never, I don't think in his history, has missed two field goals in one game. A lot of pressure. So the Look. holders at the 20 yard line. This will be a 30 yard field goal attempt. You'd expect Rolo would ice it. He did. The so Rolo ices Bryce Crawford. And that's another thing I like. Every part of overtime, you get one more timeout per series. You see Brent Brennan there hugging up his kicker. Saying, Bryce I love Crawford. you. I, I, you can do this. You think Colt Brennan's watching his cousin? Yeah. And you think most people watching this game will stick around for the post-game show? Rob DeMello, Kavika Hallams, Nate Ilawa, and RJ Hollis from the studios, our Spectrum Studios out in Milan. Hollis may give a clinic on how to block yeah. Kaimana Padella. Had a great game. Gino Choi played well. Bless Jelani, Jelani played well. Blessman 
played well. This should be a 30 yard attempt. Bryce Crawford is up. It's good. It's no good. It's no good. Wait a minute. The Spartans were celebrating. There are eight coaches in Hawaii's box. Unbelievable. That's why I told you I love college football overtime. I mean, the celebration had started. The coaches, the players, the fans. <laughs> oh, oh, contraire. Those celebrations wow. were premature. What we have here, folks, is a fourth overtime. And now San Jose State gets the ball first. What you have there is social work, counseling, and I think two head coaches that are going to not leave it in the kicker's hands. I think the conservativeness is over. And again, if either one of these teams scores a touchdown, they got to go for two. You have to go for two. Good point. This is the fourth overtime. It's tied at 38. Josh Love has time. Incomplete. Look left side. Receiver dropped. He's on the carpet. Here at CEFCU Stadium in San Jose, California. Again, Hawaii's defensive line was applying pressure late in this game and this overtime. That's what they call maximum protection. It's a two-man route, and Hawaii buzzed the defensive end out underneath to give a little help to the corner. Really a good scheme by Corey Batum. Second and 10, 25-yard line. Josh Love has time. Quick slam. Made it look easy. The one thing you teach your defensive backs is take away the inside. Make them throw the out route. The lucky none here in the fourth overtime makes his first catch of the night. Boy, he's got to keep an eye on 89. He's good to the right side. Josh Love, delayed draw. Was it a busted play or designed quarterback draw? I think so much pressure, he did not have a chance to go through his progression, Robert. And he did the smart thing. Get positive yards. Do not take the sack. You're going to see right now, they put the fifth receiver into the formation. No, I think you're right. It could be a quarterback draw. A lot of times out of empty, you'll do the quarterback draw. I think that was designed. Because either one of these head coaches have it in them to attempt the field goal. Josh Love, pressure, gets hit, alley -oop. And doing the hitting was Jelani Tavai. Tavai has a motor that just does not stop. You're going to see right now, watch him use his hands and just brush off the right tackle. Josh and Love is taking a pound. And textbook. Textbook. Got the head to the outside, put a shoulder right at the abdomen hip area. And sets up 39 from the 11 yard line. Malik Roberson at running back. Josh Love looking right side. And what effort! But balls out! Balls the out! Ball's loose. There's a scrum near the two yard line. Why do offensive linemen go downfield? This might be the reason. Officials do not know who has that ball, but it was out. They're calling fourth down. The fist went up. Is that none with the catch again? Solomon Maltauti is deep and he's pulling the lawnmower. He's got the ball out. The ball is on the ground. Troy Kowalski caught it when Maltauti yanked it out of Nunn's hands. And then he fumbled it. Went onto the carpet here. And the, the officials talking to Solomon about great technique. The ball was out. They've got to replay it to see who finally recovered. If there's even a shot at seeing who did come up with. It. And where's the ball spotted? Because it's a crucial situation in this football game. Is it first down? They measure it. Down. So here comes the change. The officials taking a knee. 
near the three yard line or two and a half yard line. Short. Did we say one Manapua? He's short. It might be the distance of one Manapua and a poor cash. What would you do? Fourth down. Under inches. normal circumstances, I kick the field goal get a dodge. Under tonight's circumstances, the kicker's in the game. I, you know what I do? Boogie Knights. Run Boogie Knights straight up the middle. If I'm the Spartans, I go Boogie Knights. The fans do not like this decision. No, they don't. And this is a quality college kicker. That confidence is obviously shaking. We're going to put it down at the 10. It'll be a 20 yard field goal attempt. An absolute chippy. That's up. That's good. It's 41 38. San Jose State. Wow, is all I can say. Dare I say this has been a great college football game? There's some counseling, there's some love. I mean, it's a long time. What time does the game start? On Friday night? Almost 8 o'clock here in San wow. Jose. It's 4 o'clock with start time. 4.06 maybe in that vicinity. Again, the post-game show, it could be entertaining. Rob DeMello, Kavika Hallams, Nate Ilawa, R.J. Hollis, live in the Spectrum Studios out in Mililan. It's always entertaining. That's quite the crew, and I love listening to those guys pre-game, halftime. Can't wait for the post-game show. Baruta remains the running back. Boy needs a field goal to tie. They go play action. That pass deflected. I like the call, though. I like the call. Aguayo gets his hands up into the throwing lanes. Bridges applies pressure. You're going to see right here, 31. He's like, if the other team's 31, going to make a play in overtime, I'm at 31 making a play in overtime. Aguayo answers the call on defense. Second and 10 from the 25 yard line. The corners on the outside are pressing Robert. Much tighter coverage. Kako McDonald. He goes outside. Receiver came inside. And he took a shot. Boogie night. Yeah, we talked about Josh Love's toughness. McDonald's also a tough quarterback. Anybody that doesn't think it's tough physically to play quarterback, Watch the game on high school on Friday, Saturday in college in the NFL. Those guys take some shots and they stand in the pocket. The Boogie Roberts gets to Cole McDonald. It sets up third and ten. Is this the fourth overtime? Yes, it is. They've got to throw it now. The Cole McDonald, Talon Day State brings the blitz. A completion. To Cedric Bird, he'll be short. But you'd like to think it's in chippy range. I'm not sure anything's a chip shot. Mesco one for three, Crawford two for five, combined three for eight. They're not, it's not even a 50 50 proposition. It's fourth and two. UH does have some trickery in his bag. Dare you? A lot of pressure. I know Noah Borden's been consistent on all snaps. The hold has been good. The right Mescal. His field goal is up. His field goal is good. And guess what? Because you all are such nice people, we're going to give you a fifth overtime. And it allows me to talk about Noah Borden. It's an operation. The snap was perfect. The hold was good. Brody Nakama is up in the box. That guy was 100%. And the Ingrams before him. The Ingrams him. before that. I really believe Hawaii's had the best long snappers in college football the last 10 to 12 years. I mean, it's been Ingram, Ingram, Brody Nakama, and then you got Borden, Borden. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. And never a mistake. 
Never a bad snap. And also, the Australian connection. I mean, we got kickers, punters. It, special teams has been special when it comes to kicking field goals and punting, usually. So in the fifth overtime, boys first. Boys got the ball. They've not played the same offense that they have the entire second quarter. Conditioning, confidence, execution. But Cole McDonald, on first down, complete. Marcus Armstrong Brown to the 18 yard line, pick up a seven. And it's tough to tell your cornerbacks to go press. Could you get beat one step? Game it's over. over. Yeah. But at the same time, the outside ball has really hurt the San Jose State's defense. Both offenses have not connected with Ursula or Oliver. Surprising. Second and three, 18 yard line. Fifth overtime. Take the Ferruta. Right side. First down, just short of the 10 yard line. Great open field tackle because Faruta had a hole and give that offensive line a lot of credit, especially on the right side. I think he lost the wheel. Solo Vipulu, Cole Laval, along with center Taanga Lima. So Faruta goes down. He may have lost a shoe. So he's out. Is that a big shoe? Length, width? It blew off feet. It blew off feet. Fred Holly, first and 10, 12 yard line. Paul McDonald looks right side. Pass knocked free. He had a receiver. Ursua got hit. Good timing defensively yeah, by he, John Trusson. And this is Trap. The corner's looking through to the number two receiver. He comes off and knocks the out. That's Trap defense. Second and 10. 12 yard line. Fifth overtime. If any one of these teams gets, it's going to put tremendous pressure on the other team. Boys first in overtime. Five. Go McDonald. It's a keeper. Touchdown. Go McDonald gets into the end zone. And then now, is there a flag? The late flag, and it looks like a holding at the second level. That came out late. Watch right here. And yeah. They're going to get Hensley. Hensley down on that second level. Hands were not inside on the breastplate. Yeah, they got a little bit outside. He might get away with it if it doesn't pull him towards you. Yeah, and once the defender gets a little sideways, you got to let go. Yeah. Wow. They played well up front, though. Yeah. It, it, and give Mark Weber a lot of credit in terms of the disposition. This is the youngest offensive line in college football, in FBS, starting so, two true freshmen. So touchdown off the board. It's first and goal, or second and goal, from the 17th. Not a change again, second and 15 from the 17th. This is overtime five. Let me give you a little stats. Love, 27 for 47, 446 yards, three touchdowns. McDonald, 32 for 52, 330 yards, four touchdowns. The guy that's been a little quiet in overtime, number five. And 89. And 89, the two biggest weapons. Robert, total offense, we're approaching 1,000 yards, 965 yards of combined offense. It's 41-41. Fifth overtime. Hawaii ball, second and 50. From the 17th overtime. Can Hawaii get to 5-1, 2-0 in the Mountain West Conference? Paul McDonald, the late blitz. He goes into the corner of the end zone and is defended well. Is that Toussaint yet again against Joe Joe Ward? Toussaint, really nice coverage. And you talk about being on an island. Not a lot of help when you play quarters 
for that outside corner back. Gets his head back. Credit Jojo Ward. It was underthrown. He went into defender mode and then back into receiver mode. He didn't just try and keep it away from Tucson. He tried to make the catch. McDonald looks right, looks down the middle, looks into the end zone. It looked like the end of the Army game. Similar route, McDonald again on his backside. And the appreciation for both quarterbacks. No question. To stand in the pocket, keep your eyes downfield, go through your progressions, and then take the shot. It's like in the huddle, it's going to be, OK, we're going to do this, and oh, by the way, you're going to get hit. There's no way around it. The right met skill. They'll put it down at the 25-yard line. A 35-yard effort. He's kicked. He's up. It's good. Hawaii now leads. 44. Midway through the fifth overtime period. The score Hawaii 44. This says this has been the longest overtime game I've been involved with as a broadcaster. I've never coached one this long. I've never played in one this long. These hazardous working conditions. We're over four hours. People are getting back from the beach in Hawaii and a great day, and they're watching this football game going like, wow. We might miss our flight tomorrow morning. So now, San Jose State. They have to get a field goal to play yet another overtime. They get a touchdown. It's over. They turn it over. It's over. It's over. Josh Love, look at the cut block. But the Spartans up front. And Lexi Nunn with the catch. Yeah, the That's cut blocking look. and then the dash. We the haven't seen the out. cut block. No, not the all game. entire game. Kevin McGivern has a thousand of the greatest plays and he's going deep into that playbook. I guarantee you, Kevin McGivern, after talking to him, there's no clean napkins anywhere near him. He'll pick it up, grab a pen, and start scribbling. Like the sand at the beach beware. He might start drawing plays in sand. The Philly special? Yes. He might have that. He'll love it. Second and four. And now from the ninth. Team. Is that Hume? It's going to be interesting because it was an awfully aggressive. Now did San Jose State flinch and I then get hit? they did hit? move. This, watch the center now. He, sometimes they call the cadence. The protection's called by the center. He moved. He moved. There's no question. No question. So false start. That is huge. Against San Jose State. The center is Trevor Robbins. 57. So it backs it up now to second and nine. And Hawaii calls penalty. Oh. Six oh, penalties yeah. for UH, 10 for San Jose State. Hawaii's been much more yes. disciplined in the penalty column this season. Only one against Navy. One penalty, five yards. You have to go back to Which 2014. Like, even a really good team gets that line. Not many teams in college football can go an entire game with one flag. Five yards. I mean, that's shows that these guys, the players, are buying into what the coaches are saying. The coaches, and that's the biggest difference, believe in the players, Robert. In this staff with Mark Banker, Mark Weber, Corey Batum, Ricky Longo, who else am I missing? Andre Allen? That's 156 years of experience. You know what it adds up to? That's what it adds up to. Wow. So it's second and 10. Back up at the 25-yard line. Josh Love looks right up. Pressure backs up. Drop. Jelani Tovar. Wow. That was huge by Jelani Tavai, and he's also. He's got to be double-digit tackles again. Oh, there's no question. But he's also tackles for loss all time. Sacks. He's climbing up every imaginable defensive chart. You know, you start looking at it, you start thinking Bo yeah. You start thinking Houston Allah. You start thinking guys that have played here at UH 
whose motors never stop. 30-15, backed up to the 30-yard line. Boy brings pressure. Josh Love, going for the home run. He had Lexi Nunn, and Lexi Nunn was covered. It sets up 14-15 from the 30. 37, 47-yard field goal attempt coming up from Bryce Crawford. Right through the fingertips. They had a chance. So the put down will be at the 37-yard line. Bryce Crawford, Crawford will attempt a 47-yard game time field goal. Mitch and the game's over. This is overtime number five here in San Jose. If he misses, his game's done. Crawford's kick. He's not going to make it. Game over. Hawaii wins in five overtimes here in San Jose, California. And Hawaii now is 2-0 in the Mountain West Conference. Wow. What a game and what a flight back. Enjoy this victory because the good teams find a way to win the close ones. And I'll tell you, the two quarterbacks were outstanding. It's never always going to be easy. But when Hawaii takes on the Spartans of San Jose State, it's always going to be exciting. And look, Hawaii's starting the crowd. The Rainbow Warriors are into the crowd with the Hawaii faithful to thank them for sticking around on the road. That is huge. And you can see that when they travel, the class that they have in terms of treating flight attendants, bus drivers, people at the hotel. This team is so much more disciplined. It's better coached. It's exciting. And I hope that people continue to try to jump on this bandwagon before it's full. Let's have to take a look. We had a camera on Hawaii head coach Nick Rolovich when Ryan Meskel attempted that. I mean, when, when, when San Jose State's kicker tried to Bryce Crawford, tie it Bryce up, Crawford. Bryce Crawford, yeah. he missed it. Rolo's face. And then Ryan Meskel, after that, <laughs> that missed the kangaroo field goal. Jump? That was something out of Australia. I don't know if that was athletic or. Look at those guys. I mean, you got to, on one side, you got to feel awfully happy for Ryan Meskel. Yes, you do. To struggle some and then get the game winner. On the flip side, look at their kicker's legitimate. One of the tops in the country had an off day. Five overtime. The players of the game tonight, 44 41 final. Brought to you by Bank of Hawaii for Hawaii, John Ursua. 11 catches, 100. I got to put the glasses on. 48 yards. Numbers, 148 yards. Three touchdowns. And quarterback for the Spartans, Josh Love. 28 of 49, 451 yards, and three touchdowns. What a game. Five overtimes. Never been a part of it. Final score, 44-41. Yeah, and I can't wait to go home on the plane with these guys tomorrow. Next week's practice. And then bring on Wyoming. It's back home next weekend. Again, you're all invited to stick around. Our post-game show is coming up next live from our Spectrum Studios in Milan. My broadcast partner, Rich Miano, for our entire Spectrum crew here in San Jose, California. I'm Robert Kikawa. Again, the final score, Hawaii wins, 44-41. Aloha from San Jose.